gusting through now. Also, I would imagine that our leopards and lions might actually move a little bit earlier today than what we've seen because of the wind that's blowing you'll find that they're going to pick up the scent of varying things and that might mean that they're going to end up going into different places and and moving around a lot more so it might be a lot tougher today to find animals than what we've seen over the past week it certainly is going to be interesting to see how things go but we're coming just to treehouse dam anyway just to see what's happening around here it's often a place of things and going on and you never know maybe there's a hippo here there's sometimes we get terrapins and varying us at other things right now it seems like Taylor has gotten on to those baboons alarm calling and slowly but surely made her way towards twin dams and has a surprise for all of you well just before the gremlins attacked us, I did hear some baboons calling and I thought that they maybe had seen Tumba. Now they could have still, because they were in the area where Tumba was last seen, but that's not the surprise that we've got to show you this afternoon. So let's take a look towards Twin Dams and look who's laying. So there's, there's lots of vehicles in the sighting with us. It's just laying, you should see him quite easily, no long grass anymore, which is another surprise. I actually cannot believe it how the vegetation has changed. Now, he hasn't lifted his head just yet. It's quite difficult to say, but it looks like he's got that sw sort of swollen face that's quite typical with him for more. And also his mane doesn't seem to be very dark. Now we know Tinyo has got quite a dark mane and so does Nsuku and Nena. So I wonder if it isn't Mfumo. The last time I saw him, he was battered up and bruised. So it's quite difficult to tell from this angle, but you're welcome to help me out. You're, more than, you're all so great, of course, at identifying uh, the cats. You can hashtag Safari Live with who you think it may be. But very windy, you can see, and as Tristan says, this wind is definitely going to have an effect on the animal's behavior. But it should work in the favor of the predators today. So hopefully, even though it is quite warm, we might see some action. Maybe they'll get up and on the move. All the herbivores and things are going to be hiding away. They, would have, they won't be out in the open. They'll be hanging around on the drainage lines, not just for food again, but for shelter. And I think that the Mulwati would be a very, very good place for the various predators to hunt today. But he doesn't look particularly full, whichever male this week's is... Uh Nose and that's him his main too full. It's still got a bit of growing to do, and it wasn't particularly dark. But again, it could just be dark under on his chest, and that's an area that we can't see at the moment. But look at that beautiful tawny colour. Ah. Oh. <laughs> cool, thanks, Chantal. Are we live again? Are we still live? Okay, sorry about that everybody. It seems as though uh, what's happening today is, it is gremlins, however, I'm not surprised as to the gremlins uh, that are attacking us. It's the wind gremlins. So you get different subspecies of gremlins out here. Sometimes they're rain gremlins, but the wind gremlins are particularly the worst ones. So I do apologize. Um, it might happen throughout the day. Hopefully, uh, the wind has been blowing for most of the day, so it should start to die out. But there is a big cold front that has hit South Africa at the moment, and I think we're going to feel the sort of force of it by tomorrow. There's already an icy feeling in the wind. Yesterday was a hot berg wind, and, and now it's starting to change. So I think it's going to be exceptionally cold tomorrow morning. Uh, my mom said that at about 9, 10 o'clock today, it was about 7 degrees. Uh, I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but that's really, really cold. It was so late in the the morning. Uh, Tristan and I and Senzo and Seb might have to get uh, all wrapped up. That's actually quite funny. I've just realized that both of us now, we, we're the TS, the, the TS or the ST team. Both of us. <laughs> quite cool. No more trailer. We're changing our names. Um, Chantal, has there been any confirmation as to if this is informal? I know it's a very difficult angle um, for us to, of course, identify 100%. Okay. 
so you can help me guess but he's probably going to relax I, he was obviously wasn't here this morning so he's been moving around throughout the day or maybe just after game drive or perhaps he was just laying in the shade of a tree somewhere and uh, decided to come down for a drink and the spot that he's laying is actually quite a nice area he's sort of sheltered well, his wind is his mane is blowing quite a quite a bit but I think it's a fairly good spot laying quite low to the ground I'm trying to think I probably would have chosen a better spot to lay though <laughs> snazzy Jeez, you said something about him being a strawberry blonde perhaps he is the ginger of the lions if it is informal like I said I he never as uh, sort of what trying to say and the wind is also taking my words away but I don't think he's going to have a particularly dark mane like uh, the rest of the coalition members uh, have but again it could be just because he's quite young and sometimes it takes a little bit longer you know it's like with us as humans we don't all mature at this exact same age and the same thing goes for a lion you might find that some mature quicker than others maybe some of their manes take a little bit longer to grow too remember form was quite big in, in body size if it is him i could be completely mistaken so we shall just refer to him as one of the birmingham boys <laughs> until we can figure out who he is and be quite nice if he does sit up. <laughs> Craig, you say that it's Mufasa. Well, I wish. You know, then we need a deep. We need. Um, we need a deep voice. What does What does Mufasa say? Come on, Senzel, give us a line. The line. Okay, Senzel can't think of a Mufasa line, and neither can I. But if if Chantel, Alice think of one, they can tell me, and then I'll try and do it. And is it wasn't it Earl James Jones that was the voice? of uh, Mufasa oh my gosh Chantal you're fantastic everything the light touches is our kingdom Simba <laughs> there we go right for those of you who have only just joined us for the first time I'm a, I'm a little bit silly so you're gonna have to put up with me I'm afraid you just told me to be quiet and I promise I'll be quiet Oh, come on, Lion. This is perfect hunting condition. I saw some zebras not too far away from here that I think you would find particularly tasty. Uh, I think that's probably the way that he's going to go. And the wind is blowing southeastly today, uh, so that's quite nice. So essentially, he's directly downwind from all those warthogs, from those zebra. I'm sure there'll be kudu moving in and out of the thickets too, and that's going to be great for him so once he decides to wake up hopefully he'll go in a northerly direction from where he is now and not particularly far i reckon as the crow flies and and the route that a lion would walk unless he was marking his territory then they seem to stick along the roads there's certain spots that they like to mark he'll probably get there within five minutes it's only a couple of hundred meters away i mean it, it took us fairly quickly to get here and i promise i was not on a ferrari safari either we were in the area searching for Tumba, so we were bound to bump into him at, at some point. But big paws, powerful legs, a belly that doesn't seem to be too empty. Nsuku, okay. Oh, okay, so Tristan and, and a lot of you are saying it's Nsuku. Okay, that's quite interesting. I haven't seen Nsuku for months. I'm trying to, I can't actually even recall the last sighting that I have had of Nsuku or even of Anena. I've only been seeing Tinyo and Mfumo for the last couple of months or so. Had some great sightings with him, so it's quite interesting. I thought his mane was a lot darker, but perhaps it's like I said, maybe it's his chest uh, that's quite dark and I just can't see it because, um, well, he's laying down. But half of their face on the floor. But we'll, of course, confirm it when he stands up. And if it is Nsuku, uh, Nsuku, sorry, we'll see his beautiful golden eyes. And also, he's, he seems to be the, the most mature of the Burmese. He's actually got a couple of scratches on him. Now, out of them all, Nsuku seemed to be the lion that had uh, the, well, the least scratches on his face. Um, Nena has, of course, the equal sign on his nose, and then, well, Tinyo and Informa just take the cake when it comes to being battered and bruised, sort of what we typically think male lions should look like. 
So he's obviously been scrapping, but those little cuts that you can see in his face, that could come from a female, you know, getting too excited and the, and, and the female saying just back off, a, a swipe to the face. Well, the same thing goes, a, ba a, a sort of an altercation around the carcass with one of his coalition members could sort of cause exactly the same, but nothing too serious, just little, little scratches and they heal fairly, fairly quickly. He does have a big mane though. I reckon if I was a lion, I'd probably be in Suku with my mane too. He's a lovely boy. Now I know, I wonder where the rest of the Birminghams are. Tristan said something about them being to, closer towards Buffleshook boundary. And he said that he's seen three out of the four Birminghams. I didn't unfortunately get to chat to Tristan for a long time before we went on drive this afternoon. We obviously do a lot of the catching up tonight around dinner. And I'll find out exactly what the animals have been up to. And, and this is the hardest part is when you go away, obviously I try and follow and uh, you know everyone's I read all your tweets and I check the screenshots to see what has been happening on drive very difficult of course though to to try and uh, pick up once you get back to work so it might take me a couple of days to remember exactly what goes on here now remember this is live and this is interactive and we'd love to hear from you both myself and Tristan so you can hashtag safari live with on Twitter with any questions that you have it doesn't necessarily have to be about lunch perhaps you want to know a little bit more about the weather maybe maybe we'll do a test on how how fast the wind is blowing today with leaves no, I don't know. That's ridiculous. We won't be doing that. But it's also good to see that the watering holes have got a fair amount of water in. Well, this is the first one I've actually seen. So I suppose that's not an accurate description because it does look like Vuyatela Dam or Gari Dam is drying up quite a bit. But Twin Dams is holding water quite a bit, which is good. Now, Roshni, you're wondering if I'd want this lion to be Nena. Well, I have to be honest, Roshni. Nena is my... Nena is my favorite lion of the Birminghams. We shouldn't have favorites, but of course we all do. We all get these special bonds with these amazing creatures uh, that we're fortunate to see every single day. Well, in the lion's case, they've only really just come back in the last couple of weeks. That's all right, better late than never. And I, I, I quite like him. I haven't spent a lot of time with Nsuko. Nsuko, why am I say Nsuko like with an O at the end? It's not, it's N, and then it ends with a U, not an, an O. Sorry about that. Even Apparently, even I've forgotten how to speak the local language but uh, I, yeah I need to get to know this boy I have seen him only about two or three times and once he was fast asleep I remember on uh, just close to Vuyatela and the other two times were quite sort of brief sightings of him so it'll be good to get to know his personality now it does sound silly when I say oh, how can a lion have a personality but they do just like you and I do, every single animal out here is an individual and some are more tolerant than others. We like we see it with them more and Tenyo, they seem to be the fighters. They are constantly scrapping with one another and well, the lionesses. We see that quite we've seen it actually many, many different times, especially last year. And hopefully we'll start to see those types of sightings again. We're still waiting for the buffalo to come back. There's now almost no grass left in the open areas. So I don't really know what is going on with the buffalo. They were due back quite some time ago. They're exceptionally late, and I suppose that they're going to find themselves in quite a bit of trouble when they come back in the terms of not from Tristan and I, but in, um, of course, from the lions that are on the property at the moment. Now, I believe there's quite a few of you that are concerned about this lion's uh, health. Uh, I can promise you right now, you don't have to worry about him. Uh, if anything, lions are extremely resilient. They're so tough. They really tackle anything that comes their way with all four paws and claws out. Uh, so don't worry about him. This is typical behavior of not just a male lion, but all lions. It's very important for predators to conserve energy. Now, they don't want to spend their time running around and playing and chasing after antelope all day long because when it comes down to potentially making a successful hunt if they've exhausted all their energy well that's no good now is it so they can sleep for up to 18 20 hours a day and that's typically what they will do especially after they have just made a kill they're exhausted once they've brought an animal down they've also gorged themselves full of food uh, so they need to catch their breath so they they will relax and you might find because it's cooling down so quickly he's actually enjoying the warmth of the sun that's why he's laying out in the open like this and it's uh, oh that's <laughs> 
Brrr, it sounded like we had a squeaky door. <laughs> it was just the, the bowl of the camera. But um, it's, of course, it's very important for these cats to rest like this. He wouldn't be laying out in the sun if he was if he was hot. Like I said, I've, I mean, I've started the drive off with uh, my little, my puffer jacket. And most days I'm, I wear long sleeves all the time. So I'm normally a little bit warmer than the other presenters. It's, it's nippy. Senzel's got his windbreaker on already. There's definitely a bit of ice in the air. I know there's lots of snow on the Lesotho mountains. So that could also be coming off like that. And he's enjoying this. It's basically uh, the morning 10 o'clock sun, you know, that we all want to f fall asleep in. It's exactly what he's doing. So he'll probably be having a quick cat nap and well, maybe he'll go and have a drink. Probably not. They don't need to drink all the time. And off he'll go probably on a territorial patrol or perhaps looking for something to eat. Now, I heard sort of whispers in the wind, well actually not whispers, howls in the wind because it's so windy today, that Tristan was in the Mulwati. Perhaps he's looking for the sticks or maybe Tumba. Let's go across and find out. Well, we've got tracks for little Tumba, so he's moved up onto this bank somewhere. And I've had Franklin's alarm calling in here, so I'm just doing a little loop around, trying to see if I can't see in all of these little thickets. There he is. There he is. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> we've managed to find him. You can just see the little ears poking out, and how luck with Tumba continues. I, yeah, I don't know. We get lucky with him, but there he is. He's busy just grooming himself. I'm going to try and reposition Seb so we have a better angle, but... There we go, you can see he's just in the grass. I'm super happy that we found him because I didn't know we would find him in this kind of dense thicket. I thought it would be a tough afternoon, but just shows you that a few, a little bit of tracking and a bit of alarm calls from a few Franklins and, well, things are set, go very well. Now, I just need to let some of the other guys know that are looking. Yeah, stations I've located on Tumba. Um, he's just in the thicket here on the eastern side of the Mulawati. Um, Ralph, close to where you passed me. Now, I don't know how I'm going to get to him. If, um, I'm just trying to see if there's a way to get to where he is. He's in Makulflatin. So, we're going to try and see if we can't just sneak in here somewhere. I just don't want to scare him in any way, although we know he's quite a cool cat. Um, let's see, if we go through here... We should be able to be okay. Come on, car. No, Rusty, come on. There we go. Seb, how's that? Uh, that might... There we go. That's as far as I can go. Riedel, you want to know when Tumba last ate? Well, we, as far as I know, not last night, the night before, because he had a big bulging tummy when we found him yesterday morning, and he had that innards in his mouth from the tree, and there was hyena activity, so I think it was the night before. He's certainly in no way looking skinny or like he doesn't need a meal, but he must be getting tired of us. We keep finding him in the... I would hope that he's not getting tired of us. He doesn't certainly doesn't seem. He's just kind of non-phased by the fact that we found him again. So busy catching flies as per his routine yesterday afternoon but I'm certainly glad to see that he stayed out of the way of the big Birmingham boy who must have wandered down from where the Styx Pride is if it is in Suku so I'm glad that he is actually okay and, and all is good and you can see he's just in the shade resting on the banks which is what I expected from him What are you playing with there? What have you got? He looks like he's got something that he's busy playing oh. with. Uh, is it a ball of elephant dung or a tortoise? A tortoise, I think. Is it a tortoise? He's got himself he's something, got maybe something. a terrapin. I don't know, what have you got there? So talking about food, he's definitely got himself a, something that he's chewing on. It looks like a shell of something. Yeah, you see it's quite hard. Tortoise yeah, is tortoise, what I reckon. Yes. Our tortoise at this time of the year. How have you found that, young man? But it just goes to show you, we were talking about it at length this morning and yesterday afternoon. Oh, listen to him crunching. It's an old tortoise, though, by the looks of it. It doesn't look as though there's too much meat inside there. But he's 
certainly he's doing some damage to that carapace already he's broken it and he's managed to open the shell out listen to that crunching but there's no legs or anything there it looks quite old so maybe it's just the smell more than anything else that is uh, making him go for it or he's already pulled out bits of legs and things and now he's just trying to crunch open the rest of this and get into that area Taylor McCurdy, who is full of chirps because she's obviously had a nice break, she says she thinks Tumba doesn't prefer fast food then. Well, no, Taylor, I don't think so because it's going to take him a while. He also certainly doesn't seem to prefer fresh food because that must be old, old, old. There's no meat that I can see anywhere on that tortoise and the way he's crunching through it, it almost looks as though there's nothing inside there. You can see there's no sign of any meat or blood or anything even though he's crunching that skull. If that was a fresh tortoise, there would be sinew, there would be a bit of... There would be a bit of stuff coming out and there's nothing that I can see. <laughs> Are you happy about your tortoise, young man? Justin, you're wondering about what exactly Tumba's whiskers are used for. Well, whiskers in general on any of the cats, not just Tumba, are vitally important as a sensory organ for these animals. So basically what happens is they will pick up little vibrations and they'll pick up little changes and they'll be able to determine what's going on around them. So in the darkness of night or in an area when they've got their heads down and they're not able to see over the grass, the movement of animals will be picked up via those whiskers so it's a sensory organ much like the eyes and the ears and the nose it forms just as much a part of it as any of the other things so that's why they have them and you'll find they're vitally important and in the cats that are active at night so lion and leopard in particular look at how long the whiskers are very very long whiskers just to help them feel around as they go when they potentially can't see if they're hunting and they can then detect prey items close to them so very important that they have whiskers and Funny enough, I've actually seen a leopard that got caught in a fire. Now, she was absolutely fine. There was no problem with her. In, va in fact, she was then named after fire in Zilo. And she's a female down in the south of the Sabi Sands. And she got caught going and investigating in a fire. And she burnt all her whiskers off. So at one point, she had no whiskers whatsoever. Luckily, she was still a dependent with her mom at that stage. But it was quite odd to see a leopard without whiskers. You, don't, you take it for granted when you look at them because you think, well, you know, you don't just kind of overlook it because all cats have whiskers. But when they don't have, it is quite entertaining not to see. Wait, what has he got there now? He's got a big piece of it coming out. It seems as though he's managed to crack through it. Now, I know a lot of you were wondering about whether he's got a cracked canine. Well, I'm not sure if he does have a cracked canine. He certainly, if he does, wrenching open tortoise skulls and the likes are not going to be easy on those teeth. And so I doubt that he does because it would have further further sort of crack and, and open up that tooth so I think that at this stage is probably fine it might just be a line on the tooth you sometimes do see it every now and then there's a little sort of hairline crack and later in life it might cause a problem but his teeth look fairly healthy to me they're bright white still and seem as though he's got massive amounts of power look at that look at how he's just crunched that shell open are you having fun where did you find this is my next question because at this time of the year most of the tortoises are in a state of estivation so they either dug themselves down somewhere or they're in a thicket somewhere where they're trying to stay out of the cooler weather and trying not to move around because it's also very dry they don't want to utilize too much moisture so the only thing that i can think is it's either a tortoise that died a while ago and it's still got a bit of scent to it and that's why he's messing around or with this warmer weather, a tortoise was moving around and he managed to find it and that's what he's got himself and is busy sort of looking at and playing around with. Yeah, that is old. We can see there's not much meat inside. In fact, there's no meat inside there. And Riedel, you want to know when the leopards lose their baby teeth? Well, with Tumba, we saw him losing his baby teeth when he was about eight months old. That's when he started to lose his baby teeth. They, the proper ones came through and his old ones disappeared. So at about eight months old is the right sort of age. 
for them to use them and that's as they shift more from a milk and go fully onto meat and no longer need those milk teeth and strong they then need stronger teeth to be able to feed off the bones and carapaces of sh of shelled animals like tortoises but this is certainly it's not a fresh fresh kill i think that this has been dead for a little bit of time but it still look as though there's a bit of a bit of meat inside there so i don't know it's interesting one it's a bit of a mystery as to where this would have come from in summer months it would have been an easy one to work out but now in winter not so much because the, the flesh inside still looks as though it's a little bit pinky white you can see just through there there's a little bit of pink white flesh in there which would not be that color if this was killed in the summer months it would be black and dry and all of that so oh <laughs> he's now got his muzzle right inside there anyway i hope he's having fun now while i sit with him and enjoy him snacking on his crunchy little afternoon tea let's go back across to taylor and her i think she's still with the big male line well, maybe not i'm not sure but i'm sure she will update you as to what her plans are and where she's off to I haven't quite decided what I'm exactly going to do this afternoon. I'd love to spend the whole day with Nsuku so I can get to know him a little bit better, but I feel like there's so many other animals on the property that I could potentially show you or could be could potentially fine. Now, it's funny how our plans sort of changed because I was initially looking for Tamba and and I'd seen some of his his tracks and I'd also seen b the baboon tracks. So I was coming down towards Twin Downs because that's the way the baboon tracks were going and I thought maybe they chased him. And then Aubrey had spotted the lions. So Tristan was actually going to look for lions. So we swapped roles today, but I know Tristan is a huge fan of the spotted cats and I am more of a lion girl though I love all the animals out here. There's also been a lot of chatter of Franklins a little bit east from where I am. I reckon it's probably the Styx pride that is causing all of that havoc. I know Aubrey's gone to inspect uh, so he will let us know. That could be another area that Nsuku potentially goes for is sort of east from where we are now and he's known to sort of hang around the Styx pride quite a bit. That's his favorite pride uh, by the looks of it. He seems Um, when I say lazy, I mean that I have yet to see this male participating in a hunt. Now, of course, it's a huge myth that male lions don't hunt, and that's nonsense. We have all seen, if you've been watching the show for long enough, many times where just the male lions have taken down large prey, such as, as buffalo, uh, and really they're capable of taking down anything. Um, but I've never seen him, and I haven't, I haven't heard of many people saying, oh, yeah, we watched uh, the Styx Bride take down the lions, and Nsuku was there and oh my goodness he helped pull the buffalo to the ground the things that I have heard are oh my goodness we watched the Styx pride pull down a buffalo and then Suku came in and chased everyone off and fed on the buffalo <laughs> that's what I normally hear about him whereas Tenyo and um, Mfumo and Nsu uh, Nena sorry are very much involved and and seem to not worry about getting their hands dirty and using their brute force which is necessary when bringing down a large prey species so Nsuku I'm open to you proving me wrong today show me that you are not the laziest Birmingham boy <laughs> but we'll see what he gets up to we'll stay here for a little bit longer I'm hoping now that it's getting colder uh, he'll get up but let's go across to Tumba he's finished his fast food and he's on the move Well, little Tumba seems to have finished his not-so-fast food. Now he's broken it all apart, and we had a really good look at it. He picked it up, and it certainly is quite fresh. There is definitely, he's eaten it over the last little bit. And I have a theory that yesterday afternoon when we saw him, I was commenting that it looked as though he possibly had something to eat yesterday because during the day because his tummy was fuller than what I thought it would be by that time of the day. And I think maybe he killed this yesterday afternoon, went to Twin Dams for water, and then yesterday he slowly meandered back and now this afternoon he's found it again and is playing around. 
That's what my theory is, because the meat inside there is still quite pink, so I would imagine it's from yesterday's meal. But there it is, he's discarded it. What have you got there now? You've got a bit of a leg or something that he's busy clawing at. What are you playing with? Now, unfortunately, I can't really go any further forward. I'm already lodged on a stump, so it's going to be interesting to try actually get out of here. So let's just see where he goes. No, he's decided back to the carapace we're going, or to the plastron. One of the two, it depends on which side it is. There we go. Justin, you're wondering if tortoise jerky is any good. Well, Justin, I can honestly say I've never had it, but if you're a leopard, apparently it is very tasty. Seems as though he's enjoying his little snack and enjoying eating it. You can see, look there, look how red and pink that meat is. So I'm sure that he's had something. Now the Franklins behind me are still complaining bitterly. So I don't know, I wonder if maybe Tundi's not coming back here. I hope it's not the sticks that have moved closer with the crunching on this tortoise shell, but there certainly is some Franklins behind me that are not impressed at all. And they cert they can't see little Tumba from where they are. It must be another animal that's moving there. It's not like they're going crazy crazy, so it could be, you can see, look, look how he's looked over his shoulder now. Yes, you need to be careful today because with this wind blowing, his hearing is going to be severely compromised. He's going to have bushes moving and grass moving and he's not going to be able to hear things walking as easily. So he needs to keep his wits about him while he's feeding off this and particularly tortoise shells because they make a lot of noise when being fed upon. I think he's lucky that there is the wind is blowing the right direction that it's blowing from where the sticks are to him rather than the opposite way around, much like what we saw this morning. In fact, it's actually blowing more in a northerly direction than anything else. Dennis, you want to know if leopards can hunt big animals? Well, most certainly, Dennis. The largest animal that I've personally seen was a two-year-old giraffe that was killed by Tingana and Moya. So they were mating together and they managed to bring down a giraffe that was about two years old. So that is a really large animal. And I've, heard, I've seen photographs of leopard bringing down baby elephants and baby rhinos as well and baby hippos. So leopards most certainly do go after large animals but you can see now why we're saying that that is fresh there's actually bits of sinew there over his paw and bits of redness so definitely not an old old carcass at all Now I'm going to sit with Tumba and see what he gets up to because he, as we know with him he's not a boy that sits for too long. He moves around all over the show. So we're going to stay with him and see if maybe once he's had his tortoise he decides to move off and go and find something else. And while we do that let's go back to Taylor who's still probably enjoying the fact that she's back in the reserve and looking at lions rather than the afternoon traffic of Joburg. That couldn't be more true Tristan. You know. I love going home, I get to see my mom and my dad and my younger brother, it's so fantastic. However, this is my real home, isn't it? I belong in the bush. I'm not quite a city girl. So uh, yeah, I'm very happy to be here, even though it is a sleeping cat, even just trying to remember what birds are what calling in the distance. It sounds really silly, but I promise you, your senses are completely sort of dulled when you go into the city. My hearing, my eyesight, my sense of smell, everything feels so foreign again. At one point I was nervous, actually. I, I don't know if it was because of the energy drink that gave me heart palpitations or if it was just because I was nervous and excited to be back in the bush. Probably about being excited about being back in the bush I could spend every single day of my life and and that's one thing I don't think a lot of people realize seeing as our cat is flat we might as well talk about all sorts of other things is that when you try and live in the bush and you try to be a field guide or a chef that works in a lodge you know all these types of housekeeper is that it's it's really a way of life and typically more for for the guides you do give up a lot and and it's just one of those things you can't half live in the bush you really have to give it's 100% of yourself and it's probably the most rewarding job in the entire world. I know uh, how lucky I am to be in the position that I am right now when all of us are, even Senzo. I'm sure this is probably the best filming that you can do, hey, is to film.
I'm going to film a zebra escape the jaws of a crocodile and then get attacked by two lionesses towards the end. I mean, things like that. You don't you don't get that from spending only 50% of your time in the bush. You get it when you sort of well indulge in all this wonderful nature so we're very very lucky even the ladies in final control when they get to go out on a drive here and there it really does make it so special so we really do love what we do like i say it's not a job it's a lifestyle we've chosen to do exactly this and yeah sometimes you've got to be patient when you have a a, a lion fast asleep but as byron would say you know byron hates to talk about flat cats and uh, and it's quite right because you never know when they're going to wake up now imagine if something like a herd of buffalo came marching out of the thicket though i don't think a herd of buffalo are going to be around today just because i have yet to even see a buffalo track however a herd of kudu could quite easily uh, come from behind in suku and might not see him because he's got a bit of coverage and he could jump up and pounce on them Now, we have a question from Christina, and the question is, do we follow the same animals or just the ones in a particular area? Well, this is where it's quite difficult, Christina. Uh, we would love to be able to follow the animals uh, everywhere that they went. Uh, that's, of course, the goal. However, it's not how it works in most areas of South Africa. So we're in a private area at the moment, the Sabi Sand Voltaine. It's a private game reserve. Yes, it is open to the Greater Kruger National Park, as the Timbavati um, and Thorny Bush, you know, all these uh, various areas, and even, and well, of course, Bubbles Hook. But the land within these private areas, so not the Kruger National Park, are owned by individuals. And in order to prevent sort of overpopulating an area with vehicles, you have traversing rights. So if you have an arrangement with um, various landowners where you, you traverse whatever that arrangement may be, it could be that you pay them monthly, or it could be that you, you swap traverses. So you say, okay, great, you can have two vehicles on my property at any one time, and, and vice versa, that type of thing. And unfortunately, Unfortunately, we can't go everywhere. It's just one of those things. Uh, and, and the animals can, which is the most important thing. So we follow the animals uh, for as much of the time as we can in the areas that we can follow them. But Christina, let me tell you, I promise you, the amount of times that uh, the cats, for instance, have been on the property and we just haven't been able to find them, that probably happens uh, more often than we think. You know, we could go two or three days, say the Nkuhumas on a Well spotted. Ah, oh, goodness, eagle eyes at the back over there. You're fantastic, Senzo. Sure, I thought you were going to show. I thought it was Kudu. I had my heart set on Kudu. Actually, let's go have a look at the elephant. We'll come back to him. He's. Oh no. Oh no. No. <laughs> Please just show what Nsuku did. Absolutely nothing. I apologize um, about that. That's very awkward. I'm so sorry to have disturbed you, Nsuku, from your slumber. <laughs> oh my goodness. So. Wendy is supposed to have her fuse for the uh, the Huta and the mobilizer or everything like that's supposed to be deactivated. However, I know that she's had a, a recent big service. And as you can imagine, the mechanics that come through and do our services, they check every nook and cranny. So they probably noticed that there was a fuse. I'm too scared to turn the car on again. Now I'm just gonna hold the keys in my hand. We're not going to, so, eh, we can watch the elephant because he's coming this way. <laughs> Listen. Buddy, you might want to turn around and look behind you. This could be quite quite a nice shot, eh? With a big, well, our biggest giants walking across the dam wall, and of course a lion. So again, sorry about that. The mechanics have obviously replaced all the fuses that we intentionally removed, not realizing that this type of thing can happen. Wendy is known for it. We can all ask Jamie about her experience that she had while she was live to National Geographic. <laughs> That was a funny moment, but like I said, the keys are staying in my hand and I'm not going to put them back in my car until I don't know when. Again, you saw though, he lifted his head, he's not worried at all, he just sort of said, that's very rude Ted, I was trying to sleep, I don't come past your room. Actually payback, that's what I'm going to say, for the amount of times that the lions have roared at 2 o'clock in the morning and uh, woken me up, perhaps it's, it's paid back. 
But I'm very excited to see my favorite animal. I didn't think we were going to see two of the big five together. Like I said, an African grey giant, not particularly bothered at all. Well, yes, I told you about him, Suku, and you didn't listen. See, both of them ignoring each other because they're a fair distance apart. Now, if this elephant bull were to come down and drink on the side of the dam, which we were on, I actually don't know if he's realised that this lion is here. Uh, he would have he would have chased and Suku and Suku would have had to well put his foot down. And Now, Sinek, you're wondering if the Ellie was attracted by the horn. I don't know, maybe, I didn't think he looked like he was in mass, but perhaps he thought, ooh, that's a different sounding elephant. <laughs> I need to meet that girl. Sorry to disappoint you, big boy. Uh, it's just Wendy um, having a mild meltdown. So that was quite funny. But again, the elephant didn't react. The lion didn't react. They all just sort of gave me very dirty looks. So I do apologize. Uh, and that's just one of the most amazing things. Archer, remember these animals? Well, they're, they are not tame. They're completely wild. If I were to get out the car now, what would happen is Nsuku would probably run away because I would give him a fright. Uh, but if he was on a carcass, He'd probably turn and attack me, so it's always good to stay, of course, in the car. The elephant, uh, he's the biggest animal in Africa. There's very few things that worry him other than people every now and then. But how entertaining was that? Well, that's a great welcome back and a great start for me. Tamba seems to be on the move again. I wonder what's got his attention, perhaps. It was the hooter. Let's go across to Tristan, and I wonder if Tristan heard Wendy having her meltdown. Well, Taylor, I didn't hear Wendy's meltdown from here. It's so windy where we are and sheltered that we couldn't hear it. But little Tumba didn't hear it as well. He's just been rooting about. We found where he killed his tortoise and found another piece. It was a massive leopard tortoise that he must have killed. So he's done quite well with that. And now he's just being Tumba. He's busy checking around, looking around as he does. Seb, I think I'm going to reposition you slightly because I think we're going to have a much better gap from below. He's looking that way anyway, so we might as well just drop down into the drainage part again and be able to see him fairly nicely then sitting up on the top here where we can't see as nicely at all so let's quickly oh look how nice this is he's just sitting perfectly Seb there we go Exquisite Bliss, you want to know if Tumba's a loner? Well no, he's not a loner he's just unfortunately a young male He's a young male, unfortunately, that has a mom that is moving around a lot. She's territorial and he's quite big, which means that he eats a lot. And so it means that poor Tandi has got to do a lot of hunting to be able to feed this large chap. And that means that she spends a lot of time away from him. But he's no, he's not alone. And fortunately for him also is that his litter mate died. Um, she was unfortunately killed by something. We don't know what. And so it was just him by himself so he's now on his own and he has to live life by himself and keep himself entertained while mom is off hunting and it seems as though she keeps coming back late at night when we're not around because every morning we come here her tracks are all over the place but no sign of her so maybe this afternoon we break our luck a little bit and we'll get to see mom joining again and coming and rescuing her little son and coming and spending some time with him but the bond between the two of them is going to start breaking and he will start to become more and more on his own Tom Letter, you are a new viewer and welcome to Safari Live and to the, the large family that is Safari Live and the largest vehicle, well, Safari vehicle in the world. Now I hope you're enjoying it so far and you will say that leopards have a good life. Well for the most part yes, it's also a very tough life though. You'll find with these guys they unfortunately have to survive is not easy. What have you just gotten your... <laughs> 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 I don't know what just happened, but he just got an absolute fight. I think it was this Franklin walking right here. So this little Franklin coming down the bank rustled, and he got an absolute fright and went bolting off. Tumbo, you're not supposed to be scared of Franklins. They are not going to harm you, little one. <laughs> so I was saying that they do have a tough life, and sometimes you can see why. Even the Franklins play practical jokes. 
Now, we're going to quickly jump across to Taylor because I believe she's got the lines and they're going to cross south. Hello, hello everybody again. We just turned the game drive radio around. So we've got the sticks. I'm going to show you them in a moment. They were moving quite quickly. And I don't know what they'd seen. I wonder if it was just one of the, the youngsters that perhaps got left behind and was um, trying to catch up to mom. Let's go off-road because we can traverse here. Let's do that. We're just coming off Leadwood Road. Nice thing you find a sneaky gap and also a spot that we're not going to fall into a mud wallow. We've left Nsuku, still sleeping. Surprise, surprise. And um, we'll catch up with him. Hopefully he'll still be around. But here they are, and they're just stopping now. Uh, I don't really want to fall into that. And I also don't want to block these guys' views. So I'm just gonna go a little bit further forward. Just chatting quickly to Orbs. There we go. Now the car that's also parked on the boundary um, can have a look too. How exciting is this? Now, that lioness seems to be showing, uh, well, she's not happy obviously, on the way that she is sort of lifting her, her lips, exposing her teeth. That's not normally a good sign. I don't think it's towards us though. Otherwise she would have showed that she was really unhappy with us. But here's one of the older sticks cup. I haven't seen them for a long time. Now, now JC, you're wondering if there's any word on the rest of the sticks cubs. Uh, unfortunately, I have no idea. Uh, I, like I said, it's going to take me a couple of days to get back into everything to find out where the lions have been. At the moment, it's just one lioness here with a youngster. But uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think there were, were there six. There were six sticks cubs, four younger ones, and uh, and then also the two older cubs, but I literally have not seen them for a very long time. The last time I'd spotted them, uh, it was a, not the greatest view of them. Uh, it was with Hosanna. He was up a tree. They had apparently chased him up a tree. It was just actually quite close to Twin Dams. All the action seems to be hang hanging around this area. Again, water, which is one thing we need to keep in mind during these dry seasons is that water is vital. itself so they will we will have a lot of sightings around Buffalo Dam around Vuitella Dam and around and don't see that I don't know what's upset her so much hello girl oh, she's happy to walk past the car not worried at all see then she's not so she's not upset with the cars I wonder if she actually hasn't smelt something see that she keeps sort of maybe they're hunting that could be another uh, another uh, potential option maybe she's looking for the rest of the pride there's three adult lionesses in the sticks pride now hello beautiful you've got lovely eyes don't you but you can see unfortunately they've still got they're not the cleanest looking lions they're not like the Ngohumas but we know that the sticks do carry mange and they haven't seemed to beat it what are you looking at I'm gonna quickly uh, did you see anything orbs oh impala Fantastic. So William and Aubrey are just sitting here, the uh, guide and tracker team from Juma. Now they obviously, they actually came across and remember I said to you that they were going to go and see if they could follow up on them. They said that there are some impala and we're in the same area where we had that incredible sighting where the impala walked right in front of Tandy. Do you remember that on the fire break? It was a couple, maybe even a month ago now, maybe a bit longer ago. It was Sebastian and I and the impala do really, really, really like it around this area again. The wind just blew my hood on. Maybe it was just have to stay like that for the rest of the day. So that's obviously what's happening. Now, well, an impala is not a great meal. She's, I don't think she's enjoying this cub. I think she's actually agitated that the fact that the cub is around and could potentially ruin their hunt. And that's uh, exactly what I think is going on. I, I mean, she's growling. Yeah, the cub just sat down. Yeah, you better listen. Now, I don't know if this is the mother of the cub. You can see that uh, definitely have has had youngsters suckling off of her. These cubs should be about six, maybe even older, seven, seven, eight months old now, I'm trying to think. The youngest ones must be close to about six months now. Like I said, it's so hard to keep track, especially when you don't see these animals for a very, very long time. So there's lots of vehicles coming through here now. 
and so what we're going to do is most of you know I don't like to crowd the animals so as soon as there's too many people on the boundary and I feel like these animals are being pressured I'm going to remove myself from the situation uh, that's just that's just me and how I feel about the animals I'm just checking so I haven't seen where the others are okay Senzo can you see the impala let's just show you what they're looking at down there is a gap so you'll see a power line and that's because we have these power lines on the main road so there's an entire herd of impala just down there completely unaware of the lion's presence and they're actually downwind of the impala which is where they want to be in fact you can see there's just a vehicle in the bottom left hand corner they near the guards that are on the on the boundary and they're completely unaware of uh, the lion's presence and that's what the lions want the lions want that to happen they've actually got a very good chance here lots and lots of timbertes around here that would create good coverage and also uh, quite a few drainage systems so they could go in they could get right underneath yeah, let's just watch this line there. She's not happy with this youngster. Um, they literally get right underneath uh, the impala and then, well, lions move very quickly with a charging speed of 22 meters per second before that impala could even twitch its ear. Uh, hopefully the Styx lions could catch one of them. Like I said, not a big meal though, uh, but it's better than nothing. You've got to take what you can get out here, especially when you unfortunately have a parasite attacking you constantly. They can't seem to get rid of this mange. In fact, I actually must say, I think, in my opinion, from the last time that I saw them, I think that this lioness looks in fairly good condition. I mean, I remember last year, oh, it was so sad. It was really absolutely devastating. Watch those. youngster as you can see it's definitely got mange but at this age I think it'll do all right as long as they constantly uh, keep getting uh, what is wrong with me I'm so excited now as long as they're constantly catching things and eating and drinking and staying sort of fit and healthy they'll be fine it will be there but they'll be okay and Liz thank you you also agree you also say that they look uh, in, in much better condition and their condition will improve uh, it just because now there's a better opportunity for them to catch animals. The herbivores are going to start to get weaker and weaker now because there's not enough uh, vegetation around. Well, not any vegetation that's got really any good sustenance to it. Uh, and that's when the, uh, the lions and the leopards and the hyenas and all the different predators, uh, you really, really get to see how uh, amazing they are. In some it's a bit more difficult for them. All the vegetation is lush and green. The animals are healthy. They fight back. But this is the better time for them. And again, though, I suppose it's much of a muchness because the rain is really good for mange as well. I can hear the ox pickers. They're flying overhead. I wonder if they know that the, well, the impala will be the others. I'm in a bit of an awkward spot now. I'm just trying to think. Senzo, if I swing right, uh, left hand down, am I going to miss those mud wallows that are behind us? Yeah. Okay, let's do that. I actually want to go along the fire break. I want to see if I can't find the other lionesses, but I also don't want to drive. Okay. <laughs> what I'll do is I'll actually send you across to Tristan now while I try and navigate and we'll also fight the wind. So we'll see you in a little bit. Well, Taylor, I would imagine that you're going to have a tough time with the navigating of wind because it is howling. And you can see our little boy is now in a thicket. He's decided to rest nicely just in that little gap there. And it's not very easy for us to get anywhere close by at this stage. It's unfortunately quite dense where he's lying. And so we're just going to let him sit there and groom himself. Also, what you'll find with him is that, as we've seen this afternoon already, he's a busy little leopard. He doesn't sit still for long, and we've noticed that over the last few days. So I'm pretty sure he's going to be up and moving and exploring, and I'm just super glad that the Styx Pride and as well as the Birmingham have moved the opposite direction to the way that he is. It means that he doesn't have to stress nearly as much now, and he's able to then spend time relaxing. Use 
by the whole thing. I have no idea where those other cubs must be and it's a little concerning because at the end of the day we know that they shared a carcass with a male lion that was not the father of those cubs and since that day I don't know if anybody's actually seen all the cubs. I've tried to send some messages to the guys that um, traverse south of us and they basically asked them how many cubs they've seen since they returned back from Mala Mala but I haven't received an answer yet because it seems really odd to me that these lions are moving around and are not trying to contact call those cubs unless they've left them somewhere but it would make no sense that one cub is tagging along and the rest are still behind somewhere so I'm a bit worried as to where the rest could be maybe they're just hiding and they've left them somewhere and they just didn't feel like following and one cub was a bit naughty and followed on I'm not sure but it's certainly an interesting situation and I'm surprised also that Insuku has left those females during the day today I would have thought that he would have stuck quite close by to them I suppose it's not going to be difficult to find the, the, the lionesses as soon as there's a bit of a roar or a bit of contact calling he can hear them and make his way straight there what have you seen now? looks like he spotted some <laughs> so Tula Ann, who is five years old, hello Tula Ann, I hope you're having a nice day. You say, does Tumba like to play with other animals because he's a silly goose? He is a bit of a silly goose sometimes. He does like to interact with other animals. We've seen him running away from Franklins and staring at Franklins and yesterday he was trying to stalk them but didn't do very well and we've seen him looking and watching everything even the leaves rustling this morning he was playing with the spider web so he is a playful character and it seems as though he does like to go after the other friends now i believe taylor has something to show so let's quickly jump across to her okay right the light i don't know here come the impala here they come here they come okay okay wait we're gonna just watch you send us to follow 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 there's a lion. There's there, 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 there. Oh, there, there, there. oh, she missed. There's the lion. She missed. Oh my gosh, I don't know where to look. <laughs> okay, so listen, have a listen to the sound that's going on. They're chasing more. They're chasing up top there. There's a lot going on at the moment. So what happened was two of the lionesses crossed the road and went into the drainage line where we saw those impala. Let's follow. Okay, now I can go because they've moved. Let's go. Okay, 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 okay. hold on. Ah! She's running up the road. They're still gonna try. There she goes, one line. Both them and the plan was to chase them towards this lioness. Um, but unfortunately, she missed. And that's the reality of lion hunts is that most of them end up like this. So I'm just going to get you into a position. She's still going. We're going to probably lose her. We'll see how long we can stay with her. But now I can understand her frustration. Obviously that youngster doesn't know, that young cub I'm talking about, it doesn't know where to go or what to do and is just following the lionesses around and really that little one needed to stay put somewhere because they could quite easily ruin the hunt. It wasn't concerned about where it was where it was going or what it was doing. It was just sort of following a lioness around. They must have a lioness on the other side of the road because I can see a vehicle. You may have just seen it moving. So I think they're coming this side. I don't know where the Impala have gone now. Impala are hard animals to catch. They are so fit. They are incredible jumpers. They can move at such a speed how exciting okay let me send her we're not going to be able she's just going to sit down now that's cool okay let me go forward let me try and find a little gap here maybe we can just watch her on the head or you know what i think it's going to be quicker to turn around and go back the other way now Oh, sorry, I hope no, I'm not going to drive you into any bushes. How cool was that? My goodness! You really just don't know what's going to happen on safari. Now, I wonder if Nsuku has heard all the commotion and is also going to come this way. He most certainly would have heard the... Uh, we're going to actually find a gap here because I think says we might watch these other lions coming back this way. 
Um, let me see if I can find one for you. It's so uh, there is unfortunately no real view at the moment uh, because I know what will happen is if I go down and onto the boundary, um, we won't really see what's happening. We've got a good vantage point, uh, as does this lioness that's just hiding behind the trees. Uh, I'm trying to think. Is she going to move? Since let me see if I park in here. I don't think I'll be able to get in. little bit better hey here we go we can sort of see that there's a lion there now you guys just sitting on the edge there I love it I can't explain to you the adrenaline that's pumping there she goes pumping through my run away but she missed I think she was distracted. I think that's why she's so annoyed with that young cub. She couldn't do what she wanted to do because as she got up and ran in this direction, when we heard the other impala alarming, uh, we'll try and quickly go around. The, uh, the cub was following her and the little one can actually get hurt. It sounds silly, but if an impala were to run into a young cub like that or stand on it, it could definitely get injured. And obviously the adults don't want that. So uh, I, I just think a pity because what a great plan what fantastic hunting technique to going around chasing them back this side and that lioness sitting and waiting but just not good enough i'm afraid here's some of the very very scared impala i'll show you there's one just where is it oh there they go the impala actually crossing the road again they're running they're not wasting any time they're getting out of here now but they don't know where the lions are see and it's windy, we can't hear anything. If, we, if you think that uh, the Impala are worried, I'd be having, well, a little meltdown myself if I was out here on foot, not knowing where the lions were. Let me get a better view again. We're just waiting for Andrew to move forward, but he has done so. They could still be there. They could just be waiting. This might not be the end just yet. They haven't used very much energy. Uh, we'll watch your impala. You see, very jumpy. Literally, any, all the sound. There's a steering book. Uh, Pilot also running up the drainage line out the other side. That one that we just Senzel was following is actually trying to regroup, just running up over there. And that's a that's the best decision that that impala can make is actually not being on its own, going back to the herd, regrouping so that there's more eyes and ears uh, around. How exciting was that? What a welcome back to work! Oh my goodness, that's amazing. Yeah, I can hear that. And there, everybody is alarming. I think that lioness is crossed now. Andrew, did that Mafazi cross? Um, okay, I'll go have a look. Thanks. Uh, that my daughter's there. He should still be there. Okay. I'm just having a quick chat to Andrew. Uh, he's a guide from Cheetah Plains. He's been on the northern Sabi Sands for a very long time. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out what's our best spot is going to be. I don't want to drive into the power lines. Oh my goodness, look at the steep drop. Uh, will we make it? hold my camera so that wouldn't be a good idea if it fell to its death lions lions where did you go lions lions i don't know now well they must be there because there's lots of vehicles there so that's obviously where they've gone let me sneak past shanae and find out if she knows where that lioness went we'll ask her quickly hi shanae did that lioness cross okay cool that's youngster still here it's only one. Oh, okay, then it's that's it. Okay, cool. Enjoy. Okay, so I just chatted to, to Chanel. I can see where they crossed, just behind her car. And so that female and the youngster also crossed over. So they've all gone through that way now. Doesn't seem like they caught anything. I didn't hear any distress calls, although when a lion does take down a 
Let me just get the radio. I want to ask Andrew if I can join him with this mail while we do that. Sorry, over corrugation. Andrew, is there anyone else there with that Madonna at Twin Dams? Quickly find out from Andrew. I don't want to. I don't want to be stealing all the lion spots today. Okay. Well, I'll try and jump on the radio. It doesn't seem to be responding now. Perhaps he's explaining everything that's happened. Wonderful, isn't it? But we'll try and head back uh, to Nsuku. Let's go across to Tristan, who is sitting with Tamba. And you never know what that fella is going to get up to. Well, he's highly entertaining because while he's hidden behind some thick vegetation, you can see he's watching. There's a Birchall's Kukul that's above him jumping around. So for those of you who don't know what a Birchall's Kukul is, it's a bird, but it's in the top of that tree. So it's about there somewhere, Seb. So it's bouncing around and it's keeping Tumba highly entertained. You can just see its tail every now and then somewhere there, Seb. I saw it bouncing around, maybe a little higher, go up oh, a yeah. bit. Yeah. There it is, yeah, there. So you can see it's moving around and that's causing Tumba to watch above him with this look of anguish as though he wants to go and play with his friend up in the tree but it's just too lazy to actually get up there and go and get to where the Birchall's Kukul is so it's quite fun just to watch him as he goes along and watches and tries his very best not to give himself away he's also had a bit want to see what's going on above him. Longing, I suppose, is the best way. <laughs> Cindy, you're a new viewer and you say, wow. Well, Cindy, you've tuned into an absolutely fabulous afternoon. We've had the most fun this afternoon already. We've had lions and we've got leopard and it's all just happening. So I'm glad that you've tuned in and I hope that you're enjoying it so far. And given the statement that you've made, I would believe that you are. Now, interestingly enough, that bird that we showed you just now, which has disappeared a little bit, is actually a bird that is indicative of rain. So it's a bio indicator for us out here. It means that if that bird is calling, rain potentially is coming. And I've been listening very carefully to try to see if it is calling because this cold front theoretically is supposed to be blown in and that theoretically is going to mean rain might come. But that bird is quiet. So hopefully that means no rain for us for now. Enoch, you're asking is the Birchall's Kukul related to, I didn't get the first part of the name, but I think you said cuckoos. No, it's not. It's not a cuckoo. It's a kukul. So C-O-U-C-A-L, kukul. It's not a cuckoo. So not the same bird species at all. And they do not rob nests and parasitize other birds like cuckoos do. So it's called a kukul, not a cuckoo. Oh, you are a busy cat. You don't sit still for more than two minutes. There we go. Up again. Now are you going to go up into your tree? Your bird has flown away long ago. <laughs> He's such a funny cat, this. Now there's another bird that's sitting nicely out in the open while Tumba, we're going to reposition now to try to get a better view of him, but there's a grey go-away bird that is way up, Seb. You're going to have to just shift to the left. Yeah, there he is. So up at the top there, sitting in the most beautiful light, is our grey go-away bird. There we are. You can see trying to balance in the wind. Now, these guys, how's that for a bit of a yoga pose? In the wind, one-legged, while scratching your head. Try that at home. <laughs> and even the best of yoga instructors would battle with that one on a windy branch. And so he's having a good groom. Now, the grey go away bird, as the name suggests, when it calls will say go away. And that's what its call is. So it basically tells everybody that when they see something, they make that call and tell everyone to go away and to be sure that there is a predator around. So if that grey go away bird spots Tumba, we'll hear it complaining quite a bit although it's now flying away so off it goes unfortunately for us here we don't see too many more of that particular family the, the Luris or Taraco family are absolutely beautiful they some of the most beautiful birds that we get in South Africa and here we only get one other species called the purple crested Taraco and I'm going to show you what it looks like now because it is probably one of the more beautiful birds that we actually get here. So this is the family of Taraco. Taraco occurs down in the south of South Africa from the sort of Neisner region. 
So that's where that one goes. And then you've got Schlaus and Livingstons, which are further north up towards Vic Falls and areas like that. Then you come down a little bit and you've got our grey go away bird here on the right. You can see little drab in comparison to the rest of the family, not quite as brightly colored. And then actually funny enough, this Ross's Taraco that you see here, there's been a record of one of these in Southern Africa yesterday or the day before, I think it is. And it is a very, very rare bird. It's not supposed to really occur. And I think at the moment, it would be the fourth record of it in the sub-region. So that's a big bird that's arrived out of nowhere in Botswana. And then this is the one that I was saying that we do get here as well, which is the purple crested taraco. Beautiful deep red wings and then bits of purple and blue and greens throughout. And this is the area where you will find this bird. Here in the Mulawati, you find them flying around fairly regularly. So that's another one of our special birds to look out for from time to time. So I often say, and I remember one of my trackers used to say that the grey go away bird unfortunately was hit with the ugly stick in the family, which I don't know if it's necessarily true. <laughs> Their coloration is perfect for the environment that they spend time because they are out in the savannah areas and their grey coloration blends a lot better than a bright green or bright purple bird. But he used to say that it is amazing. that the grey go away bird was nowhere near as pretty as the others. But you can see this is often what happens after a meal is a leopard will spend its time having a little bit of a groom, get rid of any bits that have gotten onto the paws or onto the face and whisker area when you've been crunching through bits of shell and sinew. This is what slightly though. Gee, if you're wondering if I think Tumba gets bored or lonely, yes I do, I think he does get bored. You often see him looking at everything, wondering what's going on and trying to see things and sort of investigate. So I think he does get a little bit bored. Remember he doesn't have a litter mate like Shungile and Hosanna used to have, so when they were left on their own they used to play around with each other and go up in trees and all kinds of other things, and he doesn't have that option. But at the end of the day, it's also the life that he's going to lead. As he gets older, so he's going to become a loner. He's going to be an independent individual, and he's not going to spend time around leopards too often. So even though it seems as though he does get bored now while he's youthful, it's just a phase. He will grow out of it, and eventually he's going to be a solitary male leopard, much like any of the other leopards out here. So while it's kind of feel sorry for him now, because you can see there's this kind of desire in his eyes to play and to going to have to go on his own so don't have to feel too sorry for him now I'm going to try and see if I can reposition ourselves slightly so that we can see Tumba a little bit better because where we are right now is not fantastic and so while we do that I believe Taylor has a beautiful view of the golden sun setting with our golden boy the Birmingham male in Sukul Tristan, you actually couldn't have, again, you couldn't have said it better. And I think we need to take a moment to appreciate the fantastic camera work from Sensor today. And I'm sure Sebastian is doing an absolutely sterling job too. But can you believe it? The sun is starting to set later and later. And we have to, well, wait for that beautiful golden hour. But it's definitely it now. We have got a lovely view of a, well, a backlit Nsuku who really hasn't moved much except for the fact that he's now curled up in a ball. And I think that's because he's feeling a little bit chilly. It is cold. I actually said to Senzo at one point, I'm going to have to go back to camp to get another jacket. And then, well, that, uh, well, that exciting um, incident, incident describes that it was a bad I really thought that I was going to come back because I seem to have not the greatest luck with the animals at times, but that's okay, I don't mind, it's just one of those things. But wow, what a welcome back. This is probably the best welcome back I've ever received from the animals. Uh, so thank you, Northern Sabi Sand Animals.
That was great. And I hope that those sticks lines managed to catch something uh, decent in size to fill their bellies. And I hope that the rest of the pride returns with all the little ones. I don't know where the little cubs have gone to. Quite uh, unusual. I might actually have to have a chat to maybe Shanae at some point. Um, and maybe I'll have to give her a call and find out when last all the sticks uh, cubs were seen together. Just to try and figure out. But let's not assume the worst. Sometimes this happens. And, and the cubs do get separated from the adults, but they normally find their way back. We actually had that incident last year. Most of you who have been watching for quite some time will remember that. And it was an amazing sighting. I think Brent actually had it with the return of uh, the lost Styx cubs. It was really, really quite special. Now, M. Riedel, you're wondering, would they interact? Um, I suppose it depends on the situation. If it was maybe, and also it depends on on how old the the lions were. That, of course, plays a, a huge part in it. Because if they're over, if they're about three years old, two and a half years, three years old, they're not going to be tolerated uh, by the males so much, regardless of whether they're their offspring or not, because they become potential threats. They threaten their position and their coalition, and they could be taken out. If it was young cubs, I actually don't know. I've never seen anything like that. It's an interesting question so say for instance if uh, the Birminghams came across those young lost cubs I, I don't know what would happen I've never seen a situation no. sure or would they just act uh, like male lions do and typically take out the uh, take out uh, young cubs because you know like I've just said they want to invest all their time and swell sweat and tears and well urine as well into their offspring and not someone else's so it's, a, it's actually a very difficult one to answer and I'll probably be able to answer that a lot better if I have a sighting as well and and see what he thinks uh, what would happen you know uh, often what will happen is you I have seen it before where the cubs have been left and male lions have come in to try and retrace the steps of the pride and they've stumbled across uh, all, all the litter of the young but I think we'll try and get a better view i think i might go a little bit closer we're quite far away and hopefully our friend over here will wake up as we've had so much excitement and hopefully it continues throughout the night but let's go across to tristan and let's ask him the question uh, well that i was just chatting about Well, Taylor, we know this morning full well that male lions do interact a little bit with their male cubs because a male Styx cub went and lay right next to Insuku and he didn't really even bat an eyelid. He wasn't too phased by the fact that Insuku was there, so most certainly sometimes they will. I've seen down in the south there was a male called the K&P male and I saw him with cubs all around him jumping on him all over his mane, even the male ones, and then I've seen even older lions than that so the Southern Pride, when there was males there, and, and the Hilda's Rock males, they used to also not be too phased about it. So it does happen from time to time that you will find male lions interacting with their cubs. But when they start to become sub-adults, so when they get crossover from that sort of year and a half to two years, then you find that the, it becomes a much colder relationship between the dominant male and you'll see those cubs a lot more as a threat then as a cub of their own. So once they cross that sort of threshold and a bit of mane starts to grow, then you find no longer do they interact too much with their cubs. It's not to say that they won't though, because there was a situation in Kenya, and I can't remember the name of the coalition. Are you up again? Oh, big stretch. Nope, I'm going to curl up into a ball. It's getting cold now. Yes, are you cold, little one? Yes, there we go. I'm not enjoying this weather. So he's <laughs> curling up into a ball much like in Suku. There was a coalition in Kenya that was a male with his sons I believe that formed a coalition so I think it does happen every now and then um, with 
bigger animals. I certainly haven't witnessed it myself with two big male lions, that is maybe a, a dad and a son stay together, but I've, I have heard reports of it happening in other places. So they will interact with their cubs. Fly away, but should we try Seb? Yeah. It's just behind Seb here, so Seb's gonna have to swivel the camera all the way around past me, but it seems as though it's a super relaxed virtual kukul. Of course, now when we put the camera on it, it will fly away as is the norm, but there it is right there. So that's the Birchall's Kukul that was causing Tumba to sort of have a look around and look at the beautiful red eye that it's got, those coppery colored wings and the bars over the tail. That is about as close as you're ever going to get to a Birchall's Kukul. We really don't see them that much and certainly they tend to be quite flighty birds. The only one that we generally see a lot of is the one around Twin Dams and I would imagine this is the same individual because we're not far from Twin Dams but super super nice to be able to see the detail in the feathers look at the long feet and toes of a passerine now passerines means tree perching basically and they will have the toes going forward and then the one toe going back so three forward one back and that allows them to sit on branches and then nice big long tail coming off from there with the barring on the back of the tail beautiful bird isn't it always looks so serious but it is a beautiful bird that is seriously the best views I've had of a Birchall's Kukul in a long time. Right, now it sounds like Insuku is not wanting to be undone by a feathered friend and so he's now lifted his head and is looking ever so beautiful in some golden afternoon light. It's honestly, it's the most gorgeous sighting. We sat with him while, well, he got his beauty rest and it is all yours. Give it a Yours. It's very nice backlighting if you want to come and park next to me. Oh, no, no ways. <laughs> I'm just having a, a good laugh. Obviously, uh, yours is one of the landowners uh, in Biffles Hook, which is really amazing. And he takes the most incredible pictures. And he said this after, I said to him, why don't you come and park next to me? Because this backlighting is just absolutely stunning. We know lions are lovely golden color, but to get them in the golden light with the sky on fire, as it is at the moment, is uh, not something that's a common occurrence. And he said, can you believe it? I don't have my camera with me this afternoon. Murphy's Law. But isn't that beautiful? And I hope that you're all taking as many screenshots as you can. Hashtag Safari Live. We love to see them, keep them, because in a year's time, I may call upon these pictures. That is amazing. That really, really, really doesn't get better than that. Okay, how's that? Chantal is saying in my ear, wow, wow, wow. I love my job. I love it even more. Well, I think we all love it the same, actually. That's incredible. This is really, really, really something so special. So incredible. And I think it's just quite fitting that we actually do have the wind today because it has given his mane a lovely full look. And you'll know what it's like. All the, the women out there, all men, that blow dry their hair. I can't actually blow dry my hair because you must see what it looks like. I'll actually give Nsuku a run for his money with his mane. It goes very fluffy and very poofy. But isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> That's as pretty as pretty gets. Perfect mane. I suppose he is a bit of a strawberry blonde, isn't he? Just sort of sort of darkness uh, at the back. His mane at the back seems to be quite dark and then slightly darkening underneath the chest. But what a good looking lion. And I actually like the fact that he's got a couple of scratches. He is, he is a lovely looking lion. Now I know there are so many, oh wow, that just keeps getting better and better. The sighting. And I really, and I say this all the time, I really wish that you were all sitting on the back of my vehicle with the wind gusting through your hair, hair not your ear, and just watching. And I think this is a perfect good time, well, a perfect good time. Yep, that's, uh, that's how we speak English in South Africa. <laughs> Let's do a one word tweet. Send it in. What do you think? What word could you give to describe this magical sighting that we are witnessing at the moment hashtag safari live and i hope i'm sure there's going to be some good ones 
Senzo, do you have a one word tweet? But you must hashtag Safari Live, otherwise it doesn't go through. No, I'm joking. <laughs> wow. Oh, look at that. We need, oh my goodness. All I want to do is go clack, 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 brrr, with my camera as well. <laughs> All of it, I, I promise you the allergies might come about in a moment if this carries on like this. <laughs> Chantal says, I need it for, for Instagram. I need it for Instagram. Don't worry, Chantal. I think I may have got one or two. But now it's looking really, really quite spectacular. And actually, my camera was malfunctioning. Every, all, all the technologies is not, is not working today. But that's okay. At least you, all, you are all enjoying it. Look at that. Just absolutely wow. Now, a moment ago, obviously he was turning his head, he was looking south, not the not the direction that he's looking at in the moment. That was where the zebra are. He's looking north now. And I wonder if he isn't maybe smelling the Styx lions coming from the south. Like I said, the wind is coming from the southeast at the moment. Oh my goodness, Senzo, that is amazing. I don't even know what to say anymore. Right, I believe that there are a couple of responses for the one word tweet. I thought a few of you might play this game. Stick, definitely, especially when you have a lion that looks like this. That is a very, very good way of course to describe a lion majestic lions although you can use that word for lots of different things but it's very suiting this afternoon can i please have that name again i'm so sorry i missed the beginning part oh come to reality there we go you say awesome this is an awesome tastic sighting isn't it like I said, you could go on and on and on and on. Someone gets the, the thesaurus out. Oh my goodness, I almost got tongue-tied on the word thesaurus. How ridiculous. And just completely blending into the vegetation. I, I'm, I'm still honestly amazed. And I actually, I, can you believe I'm about to say this? I hope that within the next couple of days, I do get an opportunity to not have too much action and... and the vegetation is, is sort of looking like at the moment because in just the, f the few kilometers I've driven today it's just I can't believe the change there's nothing left it's bare which is great for us of course it makes game viewing and finding animals a lot easier but lions you will always be my favorite cat remember hyenas are my second favorite animals but I think lions come in at a close third you have to have a lot of patience with them you really do but it always pays off in the end, doesn't it? Wow, look at that. Now, Mason, you're wondering how strong... Probably not even an impala with our bare hands. An impala would even give us a run for our money, but they can do it very, very, very easily. And I, I just think it's amazing now, until you see a lion taking down a large prey species for yourself, you can really only just take my word for it. But like I said, they take down giraffe, they take down the tallest animal in the world. They're able to bring them down. Young elephants, fully grown buffalo bulls, one of the most dangerous animals in Africa. They'll take down hippos, they'll go after two. So really, lions, are a force to be reckoned with. You're a beautiful boy. <laughs> now, Michelle, you're wondering if it's hard for me to resist to go and snuggle with him? Hmm, not really. Uh, I think I'd ra I don't actually know who I'd rather snuggle. I find the elephants very sweet and, and if anything, uh, cute. Um, I love the lions, of course, but I, I just know, like we were saying, how powerful they are and how sharp those teeth and claws are. 
So I'm okay with not snuggling them. And I don't think that they'd be good snugglers. I don't think that their, their coat is as, as soft and smooth as, as well what his mane looks like at the moment. I mean, it honestly does look like he's been to the salon and he's recently uh, had his hair done. And that's not the case. I don't think you'd be able to run your fingers through his mane. I've never touched a lion before. I've actually never felt any of the big cats. And I'd, I'd like to one day, just just for sort of purposes, I'd really like to have a look at their paws. So hopefully I'll be involved in some form of a game capture or perhaps a research where they're doing blood tests on animals, that type of thing. That might be an opportunity uh, to, to see these animals up close. But for now, it's okay. And I'm okay just sitting here watching them. I'd rather snuggle a dog and a cat that shows affection towards me. I did lots of snuggling of dogs today before I got here. <laughs> Roshni, you've said that you'd love to snuggle this fella. He looks so dreamy. So shall we give him the nickname McDreamy? I suppose it's quite fitting. But like I said, it's a toss-up between him and Nena. Uh, between who are the two, uh, well, the, the most good-looking lions um, out of them all. Now, what I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to share a photo with all of you later. I just, I'm going to have to try and dig one out. So I love the Birmingham boys. They're, they're really great. And I, I, I'm going to... They weren't my biggest, well, I wasn't their biggest fan when they first arrived, but they've definitely grown on me. Now, there's a, one of the first reserves I ever worked at is a beautiful male lion. His name was Mondoro, and that is the most photographic, beautiful lion I have ever seen in my entire life. I'll try and dig up a photo that I took, but I wasn't really photographing back then, so I may even share a friend of mine's picture, and I'll just show you what a lion looks like. But now, well, no, obviously you all know what a lion looks like. I very important to finish all sentences for all the young ones out there. <laughs> Don't do what I do and get distracted all the time. Uh, but what's really amazing, uh, and the reason why he's so good looking, is because it's a private game reserve, it, it's fenced off. So he's not a free roaming lion like what we are looking at at the moment. And this lion can go from here to Mozambique if he wanted to, or to Zimbabwe, no problem. Now, that's a, quite a big game reserve, 25,000 hectares, not small. And he didn't, there weren't any other males at the time. His, his dad and his, his, well, his father and his father's brother, so his uncle, I suppose, uh, unfortunately passed on due to old age. Uh, they lived for, for quite a long time. And anyway, he's on his own now. I think there's a younger up-and-coming male too, which will eventually take over. And, but he's beautiful. He has barely got a scratch on his face. Also, a dark mane. He's from the Cal uh, His parents were well, his parents. His father. What's wrong with me today? His father was from uh, the Kalahari. So a typical dark maned lion. Really, really pretty. But I like character. I'm all for notches in ears, scars across eyes. I think it really. Some great sort of camera action, a good opportunity for you to all take some screenshots because we don't get to spend too much time with Nsuku. He's a very laid back line, very relaxed, but they all are, of course, with the vehicles. Ah, so it seems to be a trend, perhaps. There's sleeping sickness amongst the cats. Tristan's with Tumba, and he's also decided to have a cat nap. Well, I think so, Taylor. I think in this horrible wind that we've got blowing this afternoon, there's nothing better than to catnap. And I was just saying to Seb now, I was thinking about moving on, but I so would like to see if Tandy arrives this afternoon. It would just be such a nice wrap-up to, you know, the last four drives that we spent with Tumba. It would be just so great if we saw that return of Tandy and them interacting and then moving off and out of this area. It would just be such a nice way, like I say, to wrap up our little story of Tumba over the last few days. Managed to his tracks come towards the central part of the property and then they lose them now that gives me an idea that maybe just maybe Tingana and Tandi might be together because I had tracks for a female leopard going up Philemon's dip this morning on the way home going towards quarantine and, and Tingana's tracks theoretically were heading in the same direction and I wonder if those two didn't meet up again and might potentially be together this during today so it'll be time will tell I'm sure if one of them is around they will show up on the dam cam at some point both of them seem to like making guest appearances at the dam cam so maybe one of them will show up but for now Tumba oh, he's just fast asleep and really he's not too interested in anything that's going on I think he's cold more than anything else he 
You know, he was active while the sun was up, but now the sun's gone down, he's curled up into a tight ball. Lisa, you're asking if it's common for him to spend so much time without He's getting larger, he's getting bigger, he's able to look after himself. You'll find that mom needs to spend more time away getting enough food for him, and so she does. And also the relationship between the two of them is slowly but surely diminishing and becoming less and less and you're entering in a situation where soon he's going to be pushed out on his own unfortunately so these time spans between mom coming back is quite long nowadays she doesn't obviously have to suckle him so as long as he's well fed like he is she can go three four days without coming back and he'll be just fine so it's okay for him he's he's a big boy he'll be able to handle himself i'm sure he's just wants mom to come back because it's a meal at the end of the day and like we were saying earlier probably craves a little bit of company remember that he's been with mom for a year and that's what he knows so he's not sure when mom isn't around interestingly enough though i can hear ox peckers calling which potentially means that there is a prey animal that is moving in this direction you can hear the ox peckers flying all around us now all of a sudden and they've just started so maybe something like impalas or nyala or kudu is moving towards where we are now and the, also to seek shelter from this wind and could then mean that Tumbo might pick his head up and have a little look around but this has certainly been the most sleepy we've had him over the last course of the last four drives he's been a lot busier than this for the last four so I suppose he's deserved his rest he's certainly entertained many a person as we've followed him around so I'm hoping that it will continue that he'll stay around though even if mom does come back Leslie, you say, wow, lion and now leopard, bingo. Well, Leslie, we've had the most incredible run this week. We've had really been spoiled. In fact, not even this week. In the last three weeks, I would say. We find that we've had lots and lots of sightings of cats. And we've had a few drives where we've had both lion and leopard on Juma, which has really been quite something. So we've definitely been very, very spoiled. And I'm super excited that the lion stuck around and that Taylor got such a big welcome back to work. It's such a nice thing when you get back from a leave and... You get into the bush and it's not quiet and you get just straight into it and you get amazing sightings it certainly does help so i'm super glad for taylor and i hope that it continues on this trend for her and that she also gets crazy sightings because myself and sebastian have been very spoiled this week for and sure. we certainly are very thankful that we've been able to see what we've seen yeah. that's for sure so it's just hopefully going to carry on for much longer we've got this you know we've got this cold front coming in and i'm hoping that that doesn't mean doesn't mean that they're all going to go into hiding like they are right now in the thick bush and <laughs> curled up. Now, while well, we sort of see if these ox peckers are going to reveal a prey item that could potentially get Tumba going, let's go back across to Taylor and the beautiful Nsuku and see how he's doing and whether or not he's imitating Tumba's same curled position. You know, he's sat up again. I think he's in two minds about what he's going to do. His, well, his typical cat instincts are going, oh, I just, I just sleep for a little bit longer. Let's go have a quick nap. That's exactly what's going through his mind. But the other instincts are also kicking in. He's hearing things, his sense of smell is heightened, and I, I don't know why he didn't react to all those impala alarming. It's actually quite bizarre to me because where he is sitting, that sound would have traveled straight towards him. There's no way that he couldn't have heard what was going on. Any other lion, even a leopard, would have got up and would have raced towards that commotion. But anyways, he didn't. He decided he was going to stay here. And I'm sure he's well aware. I'm sure he can smell uh, that the lines are just on the other side. They seem to be moving west too. So it wouldn't surprise me if they pop out around B B Baboon Pan or maybe even just a little bit further uh, south of that, maybe just out of our sort of reach. So I don't know what he's going to do this evening. Maybe he's waiting to hear a roar from maybe the Nkuhuma Pride or perhaps one of the other coalition members from the Birminghams or even from the sticks and perhaps he'll decide then but at the moment he's just taking it easy he's in no rush to go anywhere and he's quite happy to pose for us which is fine it suits me actually suits me quite well he's been a gorgeous boy very lucky to be able to sit here every now and then the birds get quite close to him too but he doesn't seem to be bothered by that 
Uh, all tucked up again. It really does blend in with the vegetation at this time of the year. See that? He goes to put his head down and then he gets distracted by something. Uh, and that's the thing though, is when lions uh, do sleep, we sometimes hear them snoring, which is quite uh, funny and, uh, and amusing, even if they are snoring. They're still listening, they still know exactly what's going on around them, except when you're as quiet as a mouse and you run up and run into a lioness. <laughs> I, had, I had such a laugh at that sighting and I just think Tara was so lucky to experience something like that. So I'm glad that the animals behaved while she was here. It sounds like she got a good Africa fix. So that makes all of us very happy, especially when you travel that far. That was very brave of that mouse. I'm still convinced that it's some form of initiation. Um, uh, if it was a mouse or a bushveld gerbil, what if, I think if, what did my brother say to me the other day? I had to laugh at my younger brother. He said, if it happens three then isn't, is, isn't it a proved theory? <laughs> I was like, uh, probably not, but okay. <laughs> He's a funny lad, that one. He's not particularly fat, so surely he's got food on the mind. Hmm. Paul Meter, now you've said that you actually make your, your children watch these live streams as part of their education. That is fantastic, and hopefully they learn a thing or two, probably from Tristan and the other presenters. Me, maybe not so much. Maybe I can just make you laugh. However, uh, I think it's very important. So when I was growing up, uh, obviously I was very lucky. We had a TV, and I was allowed to watch TV, but uh, actually I was, I was quite good in the sense of my I actually preferred to watch National Geographic um, or BBC, you know, all these shows that have various documentations uh, <laughs> and animated documentary. I don't even know. I just created a word. Maybe it's already a word there. And I, I'm so good at doing these spoonerisms. It's so fantastic. Um, anyways, I used to watch a lot of the uh, the document no, documentaries. I can't even say the word now because I feel like I'm saying it wrong. I'm just not going to say that. The, the shows that they make about animals <laughs> that wasn't live. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. Help, Chantal, help. <laughs> I hope that you're giggling. Oh, my goodness. Apparently, I should go for English lessons as well while I'm on holiday. I don't know. I apologize. I think, I think I'm just so excited. I'm so happy to be back. And not only has my team or our team been so welcoming to have me back they're putting on a very good uh, act and pretending that they're that they're happy to have me back they're great actors i mean i don't know why they, they haven't won any oscars uh, and then of course all the animals have also proved that today so i think i'm a little bit overwhelmed which is um something that you won't really see me sort of the state that i would never really get there embarrassment i think you've seen me get get there once and that was recently when i said reproduce instead of reposition yeah that was so awkward my dad still tells me about it. He said he watched that uh, clip over and over and over again. My dad's a silent watcher, and he doesn't comment or participate or anything like that. He's not a fan of social media, but he said he found that absolutely hysterical. And I was like, I'm so glad you could laugh at my misfortune, you know. <laughs> but anyways... Beautiful. Look at the sky now. We went from, I mean, an orange skyline to now pink and blue. Paul, you said that. Oh my gosh! Now I'm gonna I'm gonna die of embarrassment again. You said it was fantastic uh, to have me on the on the YouTube uh, chat the other day. Oh, it was short lived. It was quite funny though. I had a good laugh. It kept me uh, entertained for most of the day. My mom actually came into my room because it was quite. It was earlyish, I think, in the morning, and she said, "What are you laughing at?" And then I told her what had happened, and it was really quite funny. So, so yes, it was me. It was me. <laughs> I'm too scared to go back to YouTube. I'm just teasing. I'll come back to YouTube. I promise. I absolutely promise. Uh, when I'm not driving again, I will not use Twitter so much because I'm forever on Twitter. Uh, I will. I will give equal amounts to even the viewers, the viewers that are watching on YouTube, because I, I forgot that you can actually. It's absolutely hopeless when it comes to technology. That's why I'm a bush girl. I even struggle. I go home and I look at the TV remote, and I'm sort of you know, holding it the wrong way. And my dad just looks at me and says, "No, no, turn it around." And then I try and change the channel, and I've muted everything. 
hopeless. You know, at one point my mom used to phone me often. She said, I don't know what I've done to the TV and, and, and I'd have to try and guide her. I can't do that anymore. I get stuck. I phone my brother now. I've, my, something's happened with my mobile. I don't know how to do it and he has to go through all the settings. Or when Connor was here, I just used to hand things to Connor. Connor, it's broken. I don't know, fix it for me. And then it'd be as simple as turning it on and off again. Never underestimate the power of turning things on and off. That's sort of my go-to thing now, hey Senzo? You do it with the cameras as well, hey? Just reset and it normally works. It's fantastic. I'm in two minds now. What's, what, what are we, what's the time here? Okay, so do we sit with him a little bit longer? He looks very content at the moment in Suku. Or do we go look for other things? I'm trying to, what Chantal says I must flip a coin. Hang on, wait, let me, let me search in my box of tricks. I might have a coin. I've got a passport. I've got notebooks, I've got sunscreen. I should, I, I have to have a coin in here. I've got a feather. I have the scorpion torch. That'd be nice when the scorpions come back. No coins in that. I'm digging in my box of tricks now. Let's put the passport back though. I don't have a coin. Sensor, do you have a coin? Should I check my pockets? No, nothing. What can we flip? Should we dig in the tech box? Okay, right. I'm gonna find something that we can uh, flip to decide whether we're gonna stay or go. Tumba has spotted something in the distance. Well, Tumba has just been chased away here. Look, here comes Tingana. He's arrived on the scene as well. So he's just been chased by Tingana. No sign of Tundi, but Tumba knows that straight away without Tundi being here, that he needs to move on and he's quickly run away. So how is this? We don't have just one T, we've got another T. So it's all null T drive. <laughs> now I'm gonna, gonna try and see if I can sneak through here quickly to try and keep up with these two. And there's a bit of a bump that I've got to go over. Oopsie. Sorry, Seb, you're going to have to do some serious acrobatic... Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. We're going to have to reverse. Hold on. No, I don't know if I'm going to be able to stick with these two. You know what, Seb? Let's try go around rather. It's going to be easier. Don't stress. Uh, don't stress. We're not going to get around the corner here. So we're just trying to work our way out of this particular area because it's very dense and very thick and I've got to try and keep up with these leopards. So far it seems as though Tingana is going to actually just stay still for me which is great news. And I was saying earlier that there were Franklin's alarm calling and maybe that it was But how's that guys? What a crazy sighting and Tumba's reaction is interesting. He stood, he chuffed at Tingana, Tingana looked at him and then basically, oh, spike thorn to the face, don't need that. And then basically looked at him and kind of made a little growl sound and Tumba then took it and ran. He, th I think, thought initially it might have been mom, but soon he started chuffing. And then when he didn't get a response, there's Tingana, he's actually busy sniffing around. I wonder if he can't smell that tortoise. I think it's Tingana. It looks like him. Is it not? I'm just trying to see the ears in case it could be Mvula. No, it's, it might be. No, no, who is it? No, it's Tingana, for sure. No, it's not Tingana. Who is this? It is Tingana. That is him. That is him. Yeah, he's got the little smiley face on his shoulder. There he is. So for a second there, his nose looked quite different, but it is Tingana for sure. So he's come in. Like I say, little Tumba has run off southwards, and I think Tumba potentially is on the other side. Now Tingana's striding around, sniffing that tortoise carcass that Tumba had earlier. There we go. You see, he's got his nose down, smelling. Yeah, that julep. So he's trying to get out of here as quick as possible. Clever boy, well done. So he's going to keep going, which is good. And Tingana, I'm sure, is going to end up running southwards or carrying on southwards. I don't think he's going to end up chasing Tumba around. He's asserted himself already as the dominant male by just imposing himself over Tumba. And good on Tumba for realizing that he's not going to stand up to a big male. So there we go. There's a f another.
Enshi, once he feels like he's safe. He just ran up the top there, going towards a big termite mound, and I wouldn't be surprised he positions himself on the mound so that he's able to then watch what's going on down this side. Now, where's Tingana? Tingana's going that way. No, he's coming back, he's coming back. Now, I don't know if Taylor, if she wants to, she's more than welcome to head towards Tumba because I don't know if where he's going to end up. But let's say, see if we can't stick with Tingana as he goes along. And while we do that, let's go across to Taylor and see what she wants to do. I believe something about flipping coins, which means no doubt Taylor's up to something once again. Haven't found a coin yet to flip, but we found a plover. We're still at Twin Dams. That's fantastic. Okay, I, I know unbelievable sightings today. And I where, what direction Tumba went in, and I'd happily uh, head that way. But how beautiful is this little bird? I'm excited to go to Chitwood Dam and see if our three banded plover uh, nest was successful because those little ones should have indeed uh, hatched at some point. So that'll be exciting. Oh, look at you, got a little meal. What are you eating? Little grasshopper that unfortunately had died because it got too close to the water. Another one! and they end up drowning uh, again it's it's the circle of life it's just one of those things uh, even though it was unfortunate for those two uh, grasshoppers it made for a fantastic meal for this three abandoned plover I'm really absolutely really amazed at the quality of these new cameras this is incredible now, I'm watching on my monitor this is so fantastic and sends all again Wow Look at that. It's gone now. It's behind the car. Very shiny bonnet. Yep, I'm back. I was cleaning away. I not, I've got to get rid of these oil spots, though. Not, not happy with them, so we'll have to give them a Tristan for Taylor. Tris, what do you think my best spot is to relocate on Tumba? I'm just at Twin Dams. I feel like I've all of a sudden gone close. Tristan may talk more than me. <laughs> okay, Copy, no, that's no problem. Uh, you hang tight then. I'm going to leave this uh, in Gala for a little bit. I'm going to go check Treehouse Dam out. I'll come back a bit later. Just uh, quickly watch your lock. Just want to find out whereabouts Tristan is. Okay, so Tristan's actually not too far away. Okay, Copy, I'll come back to Nsuku a little bit later. So very exciting. Tristan has just said that uh, Tingana has turned and is now back on the trail of Tumba. Uh, so what most likely will happen is that the two of them will meet up again. So I'm going to let Tristan uh, carry on that side. And let's take a break. You may have just heard me talking on the radio. We'll go to Treehouse Dam, have a quick look there and race back this way. But it seems as though the spots uh, are back in view again. Let's go across to Tristan. You can see Tingana is looking up into this big jackalberry tree and I think he's sniffed out that there's something around here as well. And maybe it's the carcass that the hyenas stole the other day. You can see he's staring up into it and he's right next to the car at the moment. He's literally sitting right next to us and he is so much bigger than Tumba. Now that we get to see him up close, he really is a much bigger individual and Tumba's got a bit of growing to do before he's going to be able to compete with the likes of that. But there, look, you see how he's staring up? Sinak, you're wondering how high a leopard can jump? Um, and so you'll find with a leopard, I've seen them jump in terms of height in feet, I would say probably close to maybe 18 foot into the air. So quite high is the answer. They're very agile. They've got huge amounts of power in their shoulders and in their sort of back legs, particularly around. Now, I think he's on the trail of Tumba again. He's heading straight towards where Tumba ran. So we're just going to see his nose is down. He's sniffing. He's certainly looking out for where Tumba went. I'm hoping that though he's going to just leave it and, and run off. I don't know where Tumba is. The last time I saw him was just on top here, but he was moving around and, and kind of trying to trot off a little bit. And certainly 
Tengana is still sniffing and still trying to see where this leopard is. And, and there will be lots of scent here because of the amount that Tumba has spent in this area. Beck, you're saying that I informed Tingana of our drive time change because he's far too early. <laughs> yes, I agree. I think he's, uh, he's obviously missed the, what's been supposed to be happening. So our last minute leopard is actually not showing up last minute for a change, which is a nice change. There he goes. You see he's heading straight up to where Tumba ran off just now. And look how his nose is down, he's sniffing, he's trying to work out what's going on. I think because there's probably so much scent here, he's probably thinking that there is some sort of carcass in this area. And that's why he's looking so much and checking around, trying to see what's going on. But look at the thickness of Tingana's neck. When you see him, you realize that Tumba's got a lot of growing to do and a long way to go before he's going to become and massive individual like Tingana and he certainly is not going to be able to compete for a territory anytime soon when you've got boys this size around. Look at that. Oh, isn't that amazing? And our luck continues. I, I don't even know how much luckier we can get. I think the only thing is if we get something like a pangolin or an aardvark, but certainly it's been as good as we could possibly hope for the last little bit. Sorry, Seb, it's a bit of a rough bump coming down. Now, it looks like potentially Tingana is going to walk a little bit further south, which is good news. I'm hoping that he does keep going south and allows little Tumba a break to get away and we don't have to worry about him then too much. Poor Tumba, I've had lots of stress about him today between the Styx Pride and Tingana. Whew, it's tough being a young male leopard and being a present or a safari guide because you get so invested in these things that it's like a roller coaster of emotion and I'm sure for a lot of you as well it's the same. Now look, he's looking up. Have you spotted Tumba on top there? No, he's still ambling now. Now the next thing is if Tingana keeps walking this way, in all likelihood he's going to walk straight into Nsuku now because if he goes southwards that's where we're heading we're heading straight towards Twin Dams he might cross over straight towards a male he might get not only this leopard walking into another leopard but walking into a male line as well which is just absolute bizarre it's going to be interesting to see what happens from here he certainly looks as though he's now given up on looking for Tamba he's sniffing around but he's not really as intent and as focused as he was just now I think he thought maybe he got a chance you see, look, he smelt. He smelt where Tumba ran up the hill. Look there, he's now picked up the scent. That's exactly where the tracks are for Tumba running. You can see just in front of him. So he's now picked up. Okay, there's another leopard here. Who's this leopard? Now I'm able to work out who that leopard is. I'm pretty sure he, he's smelt that before. Now, unfortunately, he didn't seem to be climbing on board. Let's Tingana around and see what he does. Let's go back to Taylor and see where she is. How exciting, so much is unfolding. Where are my lights? No, oh, they were on. They're just not very bright just yet. Still a little bit light. Uh, so we had a quick look at Treehouse Dam and all I found was Aubrey and William and his guests having a wonderful sundowner. Though I don't know if I would care for a cold beverage this evening. I think I'd probably prefer something on the warmer side or well something that at least would warm the, my insides. So so what we're going to do now is I just wanted to have a look. I thought maybe we would stumble across, I don't know, something magical, but uh, oh, oh, it was a nice sighting to watch the guests enjoying themselves. So I suppose that was magical. We will jump back onto Gary Main now. We're just coming off onto Weaver's Nest. And I think, you know what, we might as well spend it with uh, Nsuku. We've invested so much time this entire afternoon. I think it would be a little bit silly of us, right, to not see where he ends up. Hopefully he's still going to be there. So I'm actually trying to uh, go a little bit quicker can move especially when they don't use our pathways they can navigate through the thicker vegetation a lot quicker than I can though pretty sure between Tristan and actually between all the presenters we're pretty good at trying to keep up with these, some of these animals oh! I know this is a gamble but let's just see if Janet Jackson is here and I think she I think it well she or he has actually moved holes Ugh. first gap Okay, let's have a quick squiz. I, maybe it's going to be our lucky day. And we'll actually, we'll drive on the fire break then. Oh no. 
Janet Jackson's not home. Oh, okay. Well, better luck next time. Right. It seems as though, however, Tristan's on a roll with his spotted cats. Mr. T is now marking his territory. Let's go and see what route he walks. Well, he's just disappeared behind that tree, which is the same tree that we had Tumba in the first morning. And I think we might actually lose Tingana if we don't. Oh, no, there we go. He's just hopped up into the tree. So exactly the same as what Tumba did the other day. So there must have been a carcass here. You can see how he's smelling. He's working out very quickly that there must have been another leopard around. I'm just going to go forward for you, Seb, because there's going to be a better view for you in the tree over there. No, don't turn your head now. <laughs> Typical. As I move, he decides he wants to now reposition himself. But there we go. He's up in the tree. And I at least don't have any branches around. Let's put a little bit of light on so we can see. Now, is he going to go further up? It looks like he wants to, but I don't think he's quite sure about that particular branch. Look at that massive paw that's hanging down. There we go. Now, let's just put it down onto the tree stump itself. Seb, I think he might come around this way. There we go. You see, he's coming around slowly. He's sniffing. He's looking. I certainly think that there was a carcass here that was unfortunately dropped maybe by Tumba and then that's why Tingana is sniffing and looking so much. He's picking up the scent of some sort of food item. There we go. How incredible is this? Big male leopard, massive jackalberry tree. It doesn't get any better than that. Wow. <laughs> now he's coming down. I'm going to try and keep up with him along the bank here. It's not going to be easy, but let's try and see. James, you're wondering if Tingana would be more relaxed if Tandi was present with, with Tamba. I think most certainly. I think if Tandi was around Tumba would be more relaxed, one, and so would Tingana. Tingana's focus would have been on, on Tandi more than it would have been on Tumba, and he would have probably realized who he's actually dealing with more. The thing is, he hasn't actually been aggressive. He, he approached Tumba, and he was right on top of Tumba before he noticed him. Um, so Tumba had no idea Tingana was there until Tingana was not even five meters away, and Tingana certainly didn't lunge in and, and try and bite him or anything like that. He just... Tumba lost his nerve and ran because he wasn't sure. I think he's in a different area. It's not an area he's grown up in. This is an area that he's only just starting to spend a lot of time here. And so I think he just got a off. Tumba ran, stood his ground and just watched what was going on. So I don't think there's a, there was a negative sort of interaction here at all. It was more just a situation that... Tumba got a bit of a fright because it wasn't his mom. He first thought it was his mom. He started calling and chuffing and then when he realized, hang on a second, this isn't mom. He needs to be careful. He then quickly sort of came running and crossed over. But you see Tingana's now looping back to where we started. So let's see where he goes. I just, I'm worried that we're going to lose him in all of these thickets. I suppose if we just go back and keep following him along, we should be fine. But sure, crazy. It's all gone absolutely mad the animals seem to have gone mad today they're just everywhere and this is the most epic way to spend an afternoon now I'm just some of the guys are trying to get hold of me on the radio yet yeah. well we just come to exactly where you heard me with or where you bypassed me earlier you'll find me here he's just now turned again going north um, back to where Tumba was so I'm just trying to get round again back to where we were um, but sand and reversing is not really as easy as it looks now hopefully Tumba and Tingana is going to come out here I've lost him now completely he was heading straight towards where I am so between reversing and trying to keep an eye on a leopard it's not the easiest thing so here he should come out Seb somewhere around this side just hope he hasn't turned and gone back south again because it's difficult from where we are to be able to see what's going on. Maybe get back up onto this ridge just so that we've got a bit more ability to move. I certainly don't think Tumba's going to come wandering back here. He's, he's seen exactly who this leopard is. He's now realized that this is not a leopard he wants to hang around with. So I doubt very much 
that Tumba is going to try and come and sneak back towards this area. I think he's going to run northwards, find himself a better spot, a nice thicket that he can hide in, and then try and rest there and stay out of sight. Oh, I think I've lost Tingana for now. Uh, let's see. Back where... There he is. I've got him. And he's walking back again towards Tumba. <laughs> It's just a kind of circle we're doing all the time. It's difficult because it's also not the easiest place to follow a leopard. Also got, there he is. There he goes. I think he's still convinced there's a food item here for him. Seb, can I go back there? And then swing your side. He's just trying to keep up with where he's going and how he's moving is not really the easiest. But you can see how much we've, we've been here the last few days because everything is just flattened now. We've got kind of movements and following of all these different cats as we've gone along. So, all right, let's try again. Oh, Seb. Arms are getting a bit of a workout today. I was trying to avoid a nice knob thorn that is sticking into me a little bit at the moment. Ow. That certainly is not comfortable. Knob thorn to the leg. And a probably a torn shirt by the time I get through there. There we go. Now where did he disappear to? I've lost Tingana through all of that. Let's just see if he hasn't. Maybe he went straight up here. I don't know where Tingana. I have, seem to have lost him in trying to get around that bush. Hmm. Yeah, uh, he's. Have uh, you got him? Yeah, uh, he's on the top. Now I don't know if I'm going to be able to get up here, Seb. You think so? Maybe. Let's try. Mm. Problem is that angle there. Um, 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 where can I go now? Hold on, Sam. There we go. So up and over. Luckily, Seb, did you doubt us there for a second? Um, now, apparently, I'm not plugged in anymore because, well, I think, unfortunately, my earpiece has now broken. So, Seb, you're going to have to. The knob thorn has killed my earpiece. So, you'll have to feed me through the questions as we go. And I also then don't have any radio comms, which is not ideal. So Chantal, if you can tell Taylor just to tell the guys on the radio that we're now crossing Twin Dams and we're heading in an easterly direction because I can't talk to the guys on the radio anymore. So they're going to think that I'm being very rude and not responding to them. But our knob thorn unfortunately not only impaled my leg, but it seems to have also destroyed my earpiece, which is well, not the first one this week, unfortunately. And this is what happens when following animals through thickets like this. Seb, if you can just try to keep an eye on him as well. So, uh, river age 10. River age 10. Okay, so river from age 10 wants to know if it's confusing for the parents, oh, for the cubs, if the parents don't want to stay yeah, around. Yeah, yeah, All right, so yes, it can be a little bit confusing when the parents don't come for long periods of time I'm sure these cubs sit here and wonder where has mom gone and what's been happening and why hasn't she come back to me but at the end of the day they know that eventually mom will come back to where she is now I've lost Tingana completely where has he gone so I don't know where he's headed oh, there he is got him again okay so we're all good we found him again so what happens is I mean they, they know that mom will eventually come back but it is confusing if you look at 
um, Hosanna and Shongile, who are our young leopard cubs that unfortunately seem to have been abandoned by the loss of Karula, they unfortunately must have been quite bewildered in the beginning in fact they were bewildered in the beginning we saw them moving around in all the same places that Karula used to lurk in and to used to spend time and they used to try and sort of look for her you could see and that's maybe why we've seen them latch on to other leopards as time has gone so it's they follow Tundi and they follow Tingana around to try and see if maybe not we're going to be able to follow Tingana any further we're now in a situation where it is a complete mess inside here it really is going to be tough to follow him I'm just trying to tell the others to come through because otherwise they're going to miss him and he's not going to be able to like I say none of us will be able to follow him but there he goes it's a very dense thicket inside there I doubt that these guys are gonna manage but you never know maybe they do so just trying to wave the other guys on because I think I'm going to leave Tingana there because that inside there is really not very friendly at all thanks Orbs sorry my radio is broken so, <laughs> so I was just telling Orbs because they were trying to find me and like I say I couldn't really hear what was going on so He's just moved in that direction, but I think we're going to leave it there because, well, I've already battered Rusty enough and myself, and I'm picking thorns out of not only me, but my steering wheel at this stage. There's thorns everywhere, so we're going to try and carry on, and I might just meander back slowly and see if I can't pick up on Tumba somewhere and try and sort out the mess that is now my radio. But in the meantime, let's cross back to Taylor who I believe has traded her golden light with her golden boy to well infrared dark black and white to be able to show you in Suku that much better we're gonna go into infrared now so Senza was just off of the car there we go and we've got our friend who has done his first yaw no, his second yawn Oh, okay, that's interesting. I didn't realize that Nsuku had a broken bottom left canine. That's very interesting. I don't know what happened there. I don't know why I've never noticed it again. It's probably because I haven't spent much time with this lion, which you can see there. Bottom left is just chipped just slightly. Now, this is a very good indication as most of the time when they do start grooming themselves, when they start yawning, they're getting ready to move. Sometimes they fool us though, and they do trick us. It happens on a regular basis, but he's been sleeping for most of the afternoon, and now it's his time to, it's now time to shine, really. Now, Michael, you're wondering if he'll lose his teeth with age. Um, possibly on all the altercations he gets into with other lions, he could potentially uh, damage his, his teeth. Mm, but I don't think he's necessarily going to l lose them as in as they'll fall sort of out. They'll definitely wear down to an extent, unless it's a serious injury and, and there's something that has gone wrong with the root, then the tooth might fall out. But in my experience, and, and just with looking at all the lions, you, you, you normally just see their canines are exceptionally worn and not quite as sort of sharp as the Birmingham boys uh, canines are. But I think Nsuku is the oldest. I reckon he must be about seven years old. Just with how full his mane is and the sort of size of his body, I reckon he's closer to seven. And I think Nana's not four, not four, not far off, off of it. And then Tinyo, slightly older than Mfuma as well. So apparently we've got some children watching today. That's fantastic. Not children. Young adults. The eighth graders from Illinois were wondering how old he is. So it's very difficult for us to try and age these animals because we haven't actually seen the Birmingham boys from, from birth. And uh, the lions of the Nguhuma pride, which is a pride of lions that we have seen we see on a regular basis, and they have their sort of home range in this area. We're lucky because we've watched their cubs when they were born, so we have a really good idea as to how old they are. So we sort of have to estimate 
and and we suspect uh, the four Birmingham boys I don't think that they're necessarily all related I think they're from different females from the same pride and there is a slight age gap Mfumo to me looks like he's the youngest he's got the the least developed mane and so I think he must be around six now six and a half somewhere between them and then of course uh, Tenyo just after that probably a couple of months more and then Nena and, and Nsuku uh, who seems to be uh, well, like I said the most developed the biggest main um, for the moment and even when we first started seeing the Birmingham boys you could sort of clearly see that that Nsuku was definitely older than the rest of them but they're, they're in their prime now they are the fittest and the healthiest and the strongest they're going to ever be and this is their time to shine. So what we've done now, if you're wondering, if we have just joined us, wondering why we're in black and white, we're in infrared light. So this light doesn't affect the lines at all. So I don't have my spotlight, no car lights on at all. It's actually quite dark. I can really only see about 20 or 30 meters in front of me with my eyes now, but it will fade fairly quickly. And the infrared light is very important, uh, especially when we have sort of sensitive sighting, such as, say, another altercation between Tingana and Tumba will have the infrared on. Now, you don't want to be putting a spotlight on either of those leopards because you don't want Tangana to have a better chance to uh, find Tamba or, you know, sort of vice versa. And with hunting, it's a, a incredible that we can sort of impact as little on the hunt. And by sitting in infrared in total darkness and sitting quietly, it's amazing. And normally we would do so with guests anyway. You would turn all your lights off and you just have to listen. And of course, everybody wants to see the action. And this way, we're able to provide it for you. Now, we need to sort of figure out which way he's going to go and what he's going to do. But for now, he's just going to groom himself a little bit. Of, uh, of cubs in this area. It's hard to say uh, exactly who who he, which females he's uh, side sort of cubs with. I reckon the Styx cubs between him and Nena because they seem to spend the most time. So the Styx Pride Alliance was uh, that female and that youngster that we saw earlier uh, today. And then I also think maybe the Torchwood Pride, which is another pride that sort of just hangs around uh, slightly east of our traverse. And we can't quite get there just yet. There you go. You can see he's a bit has to groom his nether regions as well that's also very important and I'm trying to think now and then Tinyo and Mfumo I reckon probably Nguhuma Pride will be their cubs but it's really difficult to say all of the males if they're around and the females are in estrus they'll take turns uh, they'll actually box with one another and have fights for dominance within the uh, the coalition and one will be dominant for a few days and mate with a female and then you know something could happen tables could turn another male comes in so it's very difficult to really know uh, whose cubs are whose and, and when you've got a large coalition of lines obviously if you've got one male line within in that area uh, seeing that pride on a regular basis then of course you can say sort of more accurately yes this male has sired these cubs and that's difficult to say but they all had a chance to mate with the with the various uh, lion prides within within their territory they're very lucky they see lots of different prides and that's very good for the, their genetics. Obviously, they want to pass on their genetics to as many different lions as possible within the area what do you think he's going to do, Senzel? I'm not going to put the spotlight on him. I think, I think we let's just stay in infrared. We, we might as well, uh, if we can put less of a light on an animal. It actually makes me a lot happier. Not that he's bothered by our spotlights at all, but again, we're sitting at a watering hole. We know sometimes some of the more shy animals come down in the evenings to have a drink, and you know, even if it's something like a daker or a standbook or whatever it may be, deciding to come come down and have a drink, we don't want to put the spotlight on him anyway. Uh, and again, what happens if Tumba is in the area too? Or what happens if Tingana comes this way? We want to try and keep everything as natural as possible. And I think infrared is most certainly the way. Obviously, they'll hear me talking, but these animals see us and hear us all the time. There we go, big stretch. Oh, you all know what a great stretch feels like first thing in the morning. There we go. Where are you going? Let's see. I'm going to walk past us. It looks a little bit stiff. That's what happens when you sit in the same spot for so long. Probably got pins and needles. Look, he's going to walk right up to the car. There we 
you go. He's just walking past the car. There is another vehicle in the sighting. They might put a spotlight on him. I'm going to leave our spotlight off of him. There he goes. So I think, don't worry, I don't think he's particularly sore. I think he's just stiff. Let me, let me reposition just from, um, of course, I need to put some light on so I can see where I'm going. But I'm... Wee! It's good on this way. So I'm just covering my eyes from the presenter light because I can't see what's happening. It blinds me and I sort of need my eyes. Oh, he's walking right past the other car. Let's get in front. If you ain't first, you last. Good old Ricky Bobby quotes, hey? Ah, I've obviously watched way too many movies on my holiday. Senzo, please can I turn that light down just a little bit? If that's okay, it's a little bit too hectic. There we go, I'm not used to the light again. Here he comes. He's starting to loosen up now too. Let me turn my lights off. Oh, you're a beautiful lion. There he goes, just walking in front of the car. Now, he's going straight into the Mulwati. No, now he's stopping in front of my car. And, he, and he's also indecisive in this moment as to what he's actually going to do. He's a big cat. He's a very, very big cat. He's listening. Very important for these cats to listen to him. And they've got incredible hearing that will determine if he hears another lion. John, you're wondering what I think he thinks of humans. I have absolutely no idea. The day that I learn how to speak lion, I, I promise I'll let you know. Um, but for now, in the car, he doesn't associate us as humans, I don't think. I think we're quite, we're very neutral to them. We don't behave uh, as humans normally behaved, uh, or normally, or as they used to behave. What's happened? Has our light gone off? Sorry, we seem to have run into technical difficulty. I don't know, when Senzo leveled the camera, something went wrong. Uh, so I'm not sure, sorry, Senzo's trying to work on it. I'm not actually sure. Uh, out in the car, they don't like us, but we also look like a threat. We look like a, a predator. He's going into the Mulwati now. Um, Chantal, we need to sort of figure out what's going on with the infrared. That I can see it's flashing. It's going on and off, so I think there's a shortage or something like that. We're trying to figure out exactly as to what's going on. So we're going to quickly try and f just figure out what's going on with this light, but let's go across to Tristan and see if he's still got Tingana. Now, unfortunately, we haven't managed to find any more signs of little Tumba. I was trying to see where he went, but he's unfortunately disappeared which well not unfortunately rather fortunately he's disappeared I think he's probably found himself the biggest deepest thicket to hide in and wait for this threat to pass but what an eventful time Tumba's had over the last few days he's really been all over the show he's had elephants he's had hyenas he's had another leopard lions close by certainly has been a t tough time for him now Basti you are wondering how we have such fast internet all the way out here in the bush Basti, the simple answer to that is that I have not the foggiest clue. Um, unfortunately, I'm not very clued up with the tech side of all of these things, but somehow, some way, we get internet as to how we get such fast internet here. Um, people that do know is, is all of our tech guys as well as VM. VM's very switched on when it comes to our tech and to our internet and all of those kind of things and makes sure that he looks after us and keeps our internet up. So. Those are the guys that will know. I unfortunately have no clue. I just know that we have a whole bunch of towers, a whole bunch of receivers and wireless networks and those all get pushed around and eventually then we get internet at this side. So there is some pattern and some way that it's done. But like I say, animals are what I know. It's not anything to do with tech, unfortunately. Pretty amazing though, isn't it? That we are able to actually get an internet feed all the way out here and be able to show you guys and, and bring this wildlife and all of these incredible interactions to you guys 
from the middle of the African bush. It astounds me every day. And now, not only from one African bush, but two. So we've got one in East Africa and one here. And the fact that you can combine those two, there's still a little gremlin or two here and there, but it's slowly but surely getting much better. And the fact that we can combine two destinations in, into one sh um, drive is just really an amazing, amazing situation. Now I'm still driving blind, so to speak. For us not to have any comms is driving blind, so I'm relying on Sebastian. So if you hear me go quiet for a little bit, it's when Sebastian's getting a question and he's trying to focus because he can't hear the question if I'm talking because my voice goes into his ears as well. So if there is a question, I'll go quiet and then I'll be able to answer any questions that are around. So if you can just bear with us, it's better than us just heading home and finishing the drive early and leaving Taylor to man the fort by herself. So we are going to try and stay out as long as we can and try and help out as much as we can over the next little bit. But I think unfortunately we're going to leave little Tumba to himself. I really I think he's had a long enough day with us. We've spent well in excess of close to I would imagine close to five hours with him today. And so you know he's had a little incident now with another leopard and it's good just to leave him and let him calm down, let him settle, let him get himself into a good situation. But I was saying to Seb his reaction to Tingana was absolutely perfect first it was priceless in that he thought it was mom and he was chuffing at her and I we saw him staring and I said to Seb I think he spotted something are there any of those animals coming that potentially was from the ox peckers flying over and he said no he can't see anything and then he started to chuff and I was like no there must be another leopard here maybe mom is back and I saw this face peering through the bush and I thought potentially it could be Tundi and I was really excited and then Tumba you could see the moment of panic on his face when he realized hang on my chuffing him is not being answered and this is not mom and then he just picked up tail and ran and he, he ran slinked low which is a very submissive behavior and that is the perfect way to have responded to Tingana on his own because had he been confrontational or brazen in any way he might have got himself into a lot of trouble there so it was good he did exactly what he needed to do and well even though it's dad and dad is you know going to potentially keep him alive by keeping this area safe and from other males, at the end of the day, he's still a male, he was on his own, and Tingana is still a big guy, and we know that Tingana can sometimes be a little bit more on the aggressive side, and so it's better that he was more submissive towards Tingana than anything else. So, job well done, to little Tumba. You're passing many a test at the moment. So, we've seen him with, as far as we know, his first kill in the form of a tortoise. He's managed to deal with a herd of elephants. He's now dealt with a male leopard, He's had lions close by, so he certainly has done, ticked a few boxes, so to speak, on Survival 101 from a young individual. So now we're just driving around to try and see if we can't get some nocturnal things. It's been a while since I've actually driven with the spotlights out, so we're going to try to see if we can't find some owls, maybe some bush babies, those kind of things. We only just sort of changed back into our more nighttime drive times where we've gone a little half an hour later this week and so it's the perfect timing to be able to actually look around for these things and to see what else could be here. Now I'm just checking the road to see if there's any sign of tracks of maybe Tumba coming all this way but the only tracks I can see look like for Tingana going south which are obviously the tracks from where he arrived. So we're going to carry on see if we can't find some nocturnal animals and while we do that let's go back to Taylor who I'm think you're still with in Suku, have no idea, but hopefully he is, and hopefully he's going to let out a big belting roar for all of you. No, nothing just yet. We're looking for Nsuku. He crossed the Mulwati and he went towards where I presume the sticks were seen this morning. Uh, I think he's going to pick up on their scent though and go south. So started going through the Mulwati and I was and then I saw where Trist, I think where Tristan is so I didn't want to go uh, on that side so I think what we'll do is we'll quickly go back we're just going past twin dams now the dam itself and we'll go towards Gary Main and then jump onto Ledwood I wonder if he's not just going to do exactly what the sticks lionesses did it is also freezing I, I can't even tell you Chantal do you know what the temperature is if it doesn't lie to us like it normally does because it feels like it's about 16 degrees at the moment it's n never that is absolute hogwash 69 that's 
a 70 sorry not seven, not even close it is ice cold perhaps it's not taking uh, the chill factor into account uh, but it's definitely it's definitely nowhere near 20 degrees Celsius I can tell you that right now and uh, I even had to, to give sends on one of my blankets all uh, right let's see Senzo can we just turn that big light off please so I just want to turn the infrared light off the main one because if I, I don't necessarily want that shining on me all the time uh, it's got up here just gone through the Mulwati now there didn't seem to be anything around there I was hoping to see some I don't think that they're going to be sitting out in the open anymore. I reckon they're probably going to hang low in the lower uh, lying branches where they normally sort of take refuge during the cooler months. Let's see. Now, Monique from London. You're wondering if I'm excited to go tomorrow. No, of course I am. Don't be ridiculous. I'm over the moon. I've never been to Kenya before. Uh, so I'm very excited, especially with all the things that are going on uh, at the moment, from the cheetahs to the lions, to the crocodiles, wildebeest crossing. So exciting. I don't know when I'm going uh, just yet. Uh, I think it's going to be soon, but there hasn't been a date finalized just yet. Uh, so, so I will let you know when I know, I promise. Uh, but I am, yes, I am very, very, very excited. I can't wait. I think I'm going to learn a lot. What I'm most excited excited about you get a chance to spend hours and hours with those cheetah brothers now I love cheetah they're amazing animals but I feel like I don't know enough about them just because I haven't been able to spend time with them like I've spent time with lions and leopards and hyenas and the various other predators we used to see them every now and then but because a cheetah is such a special sighting especially in the Sabi Sand the Greater Kruger National Park and with the lodges that I've worked at obviously time is precious animals can cross out of traverse just like they do here so we often have to move out of sightings to make sure that everybody gets a chance so I don't think I've had very many uh, spent very many hours I was trying to think the other day I reckon I've maybe had 20 hours maybe 25 hours of sort of cheetah time uh, I think some of the longest I think here's the lie who's there I think we've got him again um, Oh no, it's an impala, that's not a lion. So I'm very excited to go out and watch what cheetah sort of do. So, oh, the scrub hair. So, so many things to see, so many things to look at, I don't know where to point anything. Scrub hairs. You better be careful because there was a lion coming this way. What I'll do, let me actually, I'm going to dim, I'm going to trade. I'll just put a not so harsh light on them. I'm not really putting the light on them at all. I don't know. I'm just sort of putting it next to them so you can just sort of see them moving. And there's some impala around here too. No alarm calls just yet. This is a very good spot. And I work in the uh, herbivores sort of side tonight with all the wind. You know, if a lion does come moving through here and does step on some crispy leaves, they might hear it and it might give them a chance to get away. But we won't keep that light on the scrub hairs for too long. They don't like it. Right, what else are we going to find down this road? Mm. I don't know. I see. I'm try I can't really pinpoint whereabouts this lion is going to pop out. It was very, very, very difficult to try and follow him through a Tambuti thicket at night. It's hard enough to do something like that during the day, so we'll just have to wait for him to bump out. But interested? Oh. Right, we have found an elephant. So we go back into infrared again. And Senzel's just got to play with his all his tools. He's got to connect little gadgets, but there's an elephant um, that's just near us. I'm going to turn this presenter light off. Hello, elephant. You're not so sure about us, are you? No. Not a happy camp, and not that it's flaring and trumpeting and saying, get away from me, or anything like that. A young bull. But wary. Remember, their eyesight is uh, not as good as a lion's eyesight at night. 
but to view them in this infrared is fine. And he's probably a little bit, you know, maybe not as comfortable with our presence as he would with, well, during the day. So we'll just see how he goes. If he does show any agitation, he's walking towards us now and he seems fairly happy. Uh, we'll make a decision whether to leave him or not. It's also, it's very important uh, to respect the animals out here. As fantastic as it is to have them on camera all the time, we need to make sure we don't upset them. I'm actually going to turn, I've just turned all my lights off now. I had my, well, as you're driving along, the amount of times I've bumped into elephants or herds of buffalo at night and, you know, in the pathway that you would like to go, you can't really drive around them. And the best thing to do is actually just to sit quietly. Or sometimes, if it's a breeding herd, and you don't have infrared like us, and you actually just want to get through the sighting, it's just to keep moving at a constant speed, but at a very sort of slow pace too. And you'll find that you can move through the entire herd with maybe one or two cars sort of looking at you, maybe shaking their heads, uh, but that's that's really it. That's sort of the best way to, to get through a, a sighting, especially um, if you're worried that you're going to be trapped or cornered. You know, remember, you don't want to do that with an elephant. You don't want to get yourself stuck. Let me see where he's gone. No, he's hiding in the Tamburtis. No one else. Okay, well, we can carry on then. I don't blame him for wanting to spend most of the day in, uh, of course, well, our chair. Right, I'm going to send you back across to Tristan now. I don't know where he is. Uh, let's see how he's doing and if he's excited to go to Kenya. Now, I'm just limping slowly home, feeling very sorry for myself at the moment because I've got no audio and it's quite weird driving around without being able to hear what's going on around you. So it is like, it's, it is like being blind, exactly, Seb. So it's super weird driving around, but anyway, it's okay, it's fun. Seb is being a, doing a sterling effort feeding through what I need to know. And I believe, Monique, you were wondering if, well, Taylor's excited to go to Kenya and if I'm excited to go to Kenya. I certainly am excited to go to Kenya. It's always ex very special to explore a new place as a guide and to spend time and learn and to see new things and to grow in terms of your experiences in the world, whether that be natural or just seeing new cultures and new places. I have spent a bit of time in Kenya already, so it's not so much the new culture side of things because I do know that area, but it's more just about learning about the actual wilderness there and, and the Mara system and how it, it fits together and especially how it's going to be when the migration leaves as opposed to when the migration is there. All of these things are really exciting and to just go and spend time with friends again. There's a lot of friends that I have up there and, there's, and you know we, we're such a tight-knit group not only here at Juma but also the team that's up in the Mara and so it's going to be so good to go and see all of the friends that are you know that are up there so especially Brent and, and, and Jamie that's you know, I've spent a lot of time with those two and I do miss them being around. You know, hear all their stories and listen to what they've got to say and, and to just learn from them as well. And obviously Scott and, and all of the, the team that's up there, those are all friends of mine and so I'm super looking forward to, to catching up with them as well. There's obviously the wilderness experience which will be just all these different things that we see there as opposed to here. The problem is, is I'm probably going to be missing leopards far too much. I'm completely leopard besotted and that means that it's going to be probably a tough little time and I'll have to do just follow other spotted cats and enjoy the frenzy of the lionesses and all kinds of other things. The thing is though is by the time I get there in all likelihood most of the migration will have left so I'll be doing the stint at this stage after that so it'll be probably a little quieter when I go there in terms of the masses of wildebeest which is okay it's certainly not a major train smash and I certainly will be just fine to just go and see it and, and I think the other side of it is just to admire those beautiful views of that particular part of the world it is absolutely stunning now I'm going to limp carry on limping my way home I'm going to slowly head back I'm not far now and we're going to go back to Taylor so she can wrap things up of what's been an incredible afternoon and a really good welcome back to our friend Miss McCurdy went quite far up it and, and no success, no tracks just yet of uh, our dear friend Nsuku who spent most of the afternoon making baboon. Might as well, let's just carry on. We'll just go all the way up to Ndams and that'll be our, our sort of route home. 
who knows maybe uh, we bump into him now he could have changed direction and of course there's always tumba on the cards don't really know where he went but I'm sure he is hiding away which is a very good thing to do because it seems as though Tangana is looking for him so I hope that Tumba finds a good resting spot until mom comes back hang on what did I just see now I saw eyes but they could have been eyes you were no never gonna see that it's a bush baby it's so far away and I just saw the glowing little eyes bouncing from tree to tree. Uh, pity about that. Sometimes those little critters are really hard to get on camera, especially when they're so far off. No one's come down for a drink. Just scan quickly. But nothing else around just yet. And we're in for some chilly weather, I presume. So we're going to have to keep bundled up. I'm sure Tristan's going to take coffee out on drive as he normally does. I need to get myself a flask. I think I need to join in on the coffee trend. And then hopefully, once the cooler weather sort of moves away, we'll be able to start seeing some of the nocturnal creatures that prefer the warmer weather. I did actually see a porcupine quill on the ground today. That was quite nice. So there's some hope for that. Friends of mine, I have to quickly tell you, were in Kruger two days ago and they actually watched a young leopard chase porcupine up the road during the day. I'm so envious of them. So it's amazing what you can sometimes see in the big national parks. Uh, it's all about right place. What do we? We're quite good. We battled with them in the beginning, but we showed them and hopefully we'll continue showing them over the next a few days and they don't interrupt our feed. But it really has been an unbelievable, overwhelming welcome back. Uh, I've had all sorts of emotions uh, running through my my body. It's been it's been so great, and I'm really happy that I got to experience it with all of you. And I hope you got some screenshots. Remember, we love to see them, so share them with us. Hashtag Safari Live. Even if you only go through, perhaps you're only just going to watch the show now, um, as it, as we put it out after it's well, we finish and we're not live anymore we still be good really good to see them because I'm sure Tristan will appreciate it I don't know how many shots he managed to get in himself but we're not going anywhere as you know as long as the gremlins keep away we'll still be around for tomorrow morning so for most of you I know well you're just starting your day aren't you I hope you have a wonderful day at work or school and make sure you do all your homework and all those types of things and well we will see you, of course, tomorrow morning for the sunrise safari. Probably wrapped up in beanies and scarves and coffee in hand, but nonetheless, we'll be there.